up, Zadzi? Good morning to you, beautiful souls, and welcome to it, another midweek edition of your Feel Good Breakfast Show. And before we even get into it, you got to do that thing. Take a moment, breathe that thing called life inside, and realize all the beautiful potential that you've been blessed with once again. So let's get this show on the road officially. And uh, someone is on a little bit of a break. Yes, that's Chef Clem. So we invited the chef and food stylist, Maynard Jobert, and he's coming into the kitchen for our culinary hotline, and we're focusing on milk-based winter warmer desserts. Yeah, we pulled this man all the way out from the mountains, from the cold, just to get into the kitchen and warm our belly. So I hope you are ready for it. And the entertainment doesn't stop there, because on the stage, we are hosting the Stellenbosch International Chamber to whisk us away ahead of their festival. Oh, it's going to be an absolute delight, all of this, and more on your Feel Good Breakfast show. And let me tell you, it doesn't just stop with me because there's two even more beautiful, even more pumped up, even more hyped up people ready to say good morning to you. <laughs> oh. Impossible, man. Impossible, dude. <laughs> Uh, good morning, good morning, Zozo. Good morning. Oh, my goodness. We are talking dessert today, mm -hmm. and I'm, like, already thinking, okay, I've gained two kilograms. Nah. Today is the day. I'm going to try everything. It's winter insulation, okay? <laughs> we need a little bit of warmth because it's getting cold outside. You know, the weather has been crazy. We're going to take the edge off this morning. And we are asking you this morning, seeing as we are going to be celebrating some amazing milk-based desserts with Maynard, we are asking you, what is your favorite warm dessert for a cold winter's a day? We'd love for you to warm us up from the inside out. So let us know. And of course, throughout the show, we're going to be cooking up some amazing, delicious dishes as well. So we want you to cook along. I can't even answer this question because my favorite dessert for a cold winter's day, don't judge me, what? ice cream. I love ice cream in cold, cold weather. I don't know what it is. I think it's just because it doesn't melt as quickly. So I really <laughs> get to enjoy it. But ice cream Embracing. on an ice cold day is just extra delicious. Oh man, what floats your <laughs> boat? We'd love to hear from you. 0634088863. What is your favorite winter warmer? We'll get into some of those and make some winter warmers on the other side of kickstarting our official duties with those news and sports headlines. Uh, thank you, team. Yes, let's get straight into it. And starting off with national news headlines. Now, President Sora Ramaphosa says investments by the Netherlands and Denmark will help create a green hydrogen fund worth some 18 billion rand for SA projects. Now, he says the country hopes to benefit from collaboration on renewable energy with the two countries. And Ramaphosa hosted Prime Minister Mark Rutte at the Netherlands and Meta Friedrichsen of Denmark in Pretoria yesterday. Now, the three countries are looking to solidify relations in the production of green hydrogen, renewable energy, and a just energy transition, and have signed memorandums of understanding. Well, carrying on with national headlines, the Special Investigating Unit, otherwise known as the SIU, says all legal options open to them will be considered after the Bishu High Court ruling that the SIU is interdicted from investigating allegations of maladministration in the affairs of Fort Hare University. Now, this concerns matters relating to Eastern Cape Premier Oscar Mabuyane. And the SIU spokesperson, Kaiser Kaniago, says the unit is happy that the order does not interdict or suspend the Fort Hare's investigation in its entirety. Now, meanwhile, the university spokesperson, J.P. Ruet, has said the institution remains firm in its approach to eradicate fraud. Well, from our national news headlines, let's head over to international news. Now, Kenya on Monday signed an economic partnership agreement with the European Union that would guarantee duty-free access for its farm produce into its biggest export market. Now, European goods entering Kenya will see tariffs reduced over a 25-year period under the agreement, officials said, at a signing ceremony in the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. Now, the deal took seven months to negotiate, making it one of the fastest the EU has ever entered into. Now, Kenya, Africa's seventh largest economy, is a major exporter of tea, coffee, flowers, fruits, and vegetables. Well, sticking to international headlines right now, a record 28.7 tons of illegally fished shark fins have been confiscated from two export companies in Brazil. Now, Brazil's Environmental Protection Agency, IBAMA, has estimated that some 11,000 blue sharks and shortfin mako sharks were slaughtered to make up a haul of this size. Now, the fins were destined for Asia, where shark fin soup is considered a delicacy. And the two companies have not been named, and IBAMA has said this could be the largest seizure by weight of illegally fished shark fins so far worldwide. 
Well, lastly, in our news headlines, if you're visiting the Garden Province this week, head for Durban's Bluff. Now, this is where Soderba Tourism and Organization will be hosting its sixth annual welcoming of the Wales Festival from Friday to Sunday at the old whaling station on the Bluff, which is, of course, also a world whale heritage site. Now, there will be educational programs for children, an arts and crafts market, food stalls, and beach games. Now, the old whaling station on Durban's Bluff was one of the largest whaling stations in the Southern Hemisphere and was used from 1907 to 1975. Well, that's the, all the headlines I have for you right now. We'll touch base in another hour, but the G-Man is coming through and bringing you all the latest when it comes to sport. Thank you so much. Well, let's kick it off with rugby this morning. And Sia Khaleesi says he is confident that he'll be ready for the World Cup as he continues his recovery from that knee injury in the Springbok camp in Pretoria. So Khaleesi has stepped up his recovery during the Pretoria-based Springbok camp, where a squad of 41 now has assembled to prepare for the rugby championship. And then, of course, the Rugby World Cup after that. Of course, you might remember back in 2019, Khaleesi was in a race against time to get fit at the same camp in the same city and recovered to lead the Springboks to their World Cup victory in Japan. I'm going to take it as a sign. Now we move out to football and casting a gaze towards next season. Mamelodi Sundowns have now announced, in fact, a four-year contract extension for coach Rulani Mokwena. So Mokwena began his last season as a co-coach alongside Mankoba Mkriti and Steve Compella and had a phenomenal year. So a coaching reshuffle in October last year saw him become sole head coach after which he had had letdowns to their sixth straight league title the Brazilians had 71 points left them a point short of their own record in fact of 72 for a 16 team PSL set in 2015 and 2016 McGrenna also steered Sundowns to the semi-finals of the CAF Champions League exiting narrowly away on goals to Virat Athletic of Morocco and staying with footballing news, a little further afield, Cristiano Ronaldo became the first ever men's player to reach 200 international caps when he led Portugal in their Euro 2024 qualifier against Iceland. The skipper marked the occasion by netting an 89th minute winner, as he does, he is 123rd for his country. In fact, as a tribute to his historic accomplishment, Ronaldo was presented with an official certificate as a complimentary record holder by Guinness World Records. Incredible. Additionally, he received a Portugal shirt adorned with the number 200 printed prominently on the back symbolizing his record-breaking caps and Christine Lilly she holds the overall record with 354 international caps it's going to be tough to beat now we turn to cricket and return to that battle royale playing out in the ashes so Australia's captain Pat Cummings he sealed a remarkable two-wicket victory for his side over England in a thrilling climax to what has really been a gripping five-day battle in the opening ashes test so the visitors set a 281 victory target, began a rain-delayed day on 107 for three, but their chances looked remote when they were reduced to 227 for eight. But Cummings, in partnership with Nathan Lyon, launched a fight back and sealed victory with an unbeaten 44. Bearing in mind, these are both bowlers. Now, Usman Khawaja was named player of the match after scoring that 141 in the first innings and 65 in the second. Well, that's where we leave our sport for now. We'll touch on those headlines again in about an hour or so. We know the weather has been intense this week, certainly here in the Western Cape. Let's get the latest on the weather front from Zoe. Thank you, Graham. And we have some joyous news to share. Dams supplying the Western Cape have reached the 90% mark. This follows heavy rainfall over the province in the past few days. Water and Sanitation Department spokesperson Vasane Mavasa says the welcome rains have left many communities devastated. Mavasa says two people have lost their lives as a result of flooding brought on by torrential rain. And to quote, Mavasa says it's the first time that the system has reached this capacity in the past nine years. We would like as a department to call on members of the public to be cautious in the heavy rain. None of our infrastructure in the province has shown any damage, but we're continuing audits on infrastructure to, um, and structures as the rainfall continues, Mavasa says. The Berg, Stienbras Upper and Stienbras Lower Dam stand at 100%. Vemershoek Dam is on 99% and Tierwaterskloof is almost 97% full. 
Well, let's take a look at today's temperatures. Let's start off in Polokwane. A low of 6 with a high of 22 can be expected. Mbumbela, 11.24. Sunny in Pretoria, 7 with a high of 20. Johannesburg, 5 reaching a high of 19. Mahiking, 2 reaching a high of 23. Klagsdorp, 0 with a high of 21. Kimberley, brace yourself, minus 1 is your low, 17 your high. Bloemfontein, minus 3 with a high of 17. Richards Bay, 14, 24. Peter Marisburg, 6 with a high of 22. Partly cloudy conditions for Durban, 14 with a high of 22. Mtata, 6 reaching a high of 20. East London, 9 with a high of 19. Craddock, 4, 17. Kabecha, rainy conditions, a low of 6 with a high of 18. If you're in George, 7 is your low, 15 your high. Cape Town, 9 reaching a high of 14. Worcester, 7 with a high of 14. Sutherland, 5 with a high of 14. And Uppington, your low is 3, your high 22 degrees Celsius. Well, those are your temperatures for your Wednesday. But let's see what your sunrise views are looking like. Ashley from Kareja is kicking us off this morning with this magical view showcasing the sun rising up. Noreen in Durban is out and about and very excited to share this view with us. We love it. Joe in Manzum Toti showcased this blissful view of the ocean. Look at those purple tones. And Nina in Gordon's Bay captured this beautiful moment. Just look at those colors. Absolutely spectacular. Well, we love seeing your sunrise view, so please continue to share it with us. Our WhatsApp number is 063-408-8863. Thank you so much, Zoe. And yes, Mzanzi, as you can see, it's getting chilly out here. We are into the thick of winter, and it's time to get warmed up. So we brought someone in to do just that. May not your bear standing by. He's going to be serving us with a beautiful winter warmer dessert, so you better not go anywhere. You ready for this, Mzanzi? Mm -mm -mm. It's going to be good. I'll see you there. <laughs> <laughs> Introducing new Jacob's Origins. For those who recognize the authentic taste and aroma from Latin America and Southeast Asia. Magical Jacob's Aroma. It's my feel-good show. Oh, yes, Mzanzi, welcome back. It is the Culinary Hotline Bling! Ching, ching, ching! <laughs> and we have an absolutely very, very exciting guest here this morning. He's no stranger to the Espresso Kitchen. He's a chef. He's a food stylist. He goes by the name of Maynard Jobert. Let's welcome him to your feel-good breakfast show! 
<laughs> now listen up, this man is known for serving up some of the most delicious foods at the Cathedral Cellar Kitchen. It's an absolutely sought after and exclusive venue in Paul, situated in the Cape Winelands. And of course, today, if you have any culinary questions, then join in on the discussion. Come through and send those voice notes, voice notes to our WhatsApp line. It's 063-408-8863. So of course, the fact that we have this man here, Maynard is in the building. He's here to give us his expertise and share his recipes for winter and we're talking about a milk-based dessert it's the theme that we've lined up for the morning and it's especially to serve you because it's getting chilly man yes, it is. may not are you good yes i'm very well so i grew up in the eastern free state and the day it gets very very yeah, it's cold like minus temperatures yeah so yeah it's like minus so we always had rooibos steak cooking in the kitchen so oh, that's okay. a very fond memory for me so when uh, you guys asked to do milk-based desserts I thought, let's do some rooibos tea. With okay, it. are we throwing the rooibos tea into this? Yes, so we've got some nice. rooibos tea bags cooking here with 500 milliliters of cream. I'm going to ask you to fish that out. And then right. we're going to be making a bread and butter pudding with uh, hot cross buns. Oh, yum. Yeah. Okay, so, so can, can we just talk about the fact that yes. this smells absolutely delicious already? Yes, so you've, it does. You, you mentioned yeah. we use some cream in that. And yeah, there's 500 milliliters of cream. All right. And then you can add this cup of whole full cream milk you can just put that in there let's turn the heat up and not the smells i'm getting right now this it's wonderful uh, how can you do this so early in the morning you mad there's a whisk for you. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can right. also put in the in. white to chocolate i always think white chocolate is such a nice um mm, uh, yeah. uh, partner for for rooibos tea and like milk desserts right. over here we've got about five uh, egg yolks and two whole eggs that we're right. going to be whipping with some caster sugar Yum. Yeah, so, there so what's the end goal for this? You want to get that like aerated? How do you yes, want it to look at it? We just want this beautiful, beautiful creamy sauce. Okay. That we are going to put over the hot cross buns over here. All right. Okay, one and uh, you did say I can throw the chocolate yes, in, yeah? Yes, yes that please. No one's going to say no to this. All okay, of it? Cool. Yes, all of it. All right. And then you can just stir that stir and that melt up. that down for oh, us. Okay. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. Okay, so over here we've got some. Um, Hot cross buns that we buttered on the inside, Ooh. so very Ooh. decadent. Yes. Uh, and hot cross buns you get all uh, right through the year now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah all Always available, it seems, not just in Easter, which exactly. I'm very grateful for. <laughs> and, uh, which is amazing about hot cross buns in this dessert is it's going to add that beautiful cinnamony uh, sort of winter yes. uh, flavor. So we kind just of that, the, the, the spicy notes that you want in winter yes. to warm you up, right? Exactly. Now, our man's bringing exactly. it through. Man, exactly. I knew there was a reason why we got the pros in yeah. today. <laughs> <laughs> so we've buttered them and then we've quartered them. Okay. Just so that when we pour that beautiful sauce over it, uh, we are going to have all that beautiful sauce. So it's going to get soaking. absorbed and yeah, soaked by the, soak by the, the buns there. Oh, I can just imagine yeah. the biting into one of those buns after it's taken in all this flavor, all yes. this magic. Oh, and it smells delicious Enough already. to get you dancing in the kitchen. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> so how are we doing over there? I think this oh. is good. It's fully melted inside melted? Yeah, I've okay, got cool. nothing else left. Now we are going to slowly start pouring. Ooh. That mixture in there, but right. really slowly, because we don't want uh, we don't want the eggs to curdle. Yeah, Are perfect. you going to trust me with this job? Eh? Should I do? It? I, maybe, maybe, okay, maybe, I'll maybe do, just in case. The pressure's on you this morning, man. <laughs> <laughs> can I put the the oven yes, off? Yes, you can turn it off. Right, okay, cool. Off. So this so we... is just a little bit of a delicate um, part of the uh, process. Why are there. we doing it so delicately and slowly? Ah, because yeah, because we don't want the, the 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 milk, the heat of the milk to cook the eggs. We just want to create a beautiful sort of a caramel sauce, which is going to form the base of um, of what we do. You'll see, there's a bit of vanilla essence over there. If you want to add that to the sauce, right, the it's in our the ramekin side, over there. The side over here. So is this going in as well? Yes, you All can right. pour that I in. I love this. This is like a, a two-man job. Everyone really? working together, like we have yeah. the pit crew here sorting <laughs> this thing out. So slowly throw the vanilla essence in as there well. There we go. Voila. Perfect, perfect, Beautiful. perfect. And I, I, I know I'm saying this a lot, but the flavors and the profile that you've amazing, built man. up from this yeah. alone, it really has that warmth. It really is inviting. It yes. reminds me of like that. Sit down and have a liquor salsa with your mensa and just enjoy being present in exactly. the Exactly, and uh, this is one of those desserts that... Um, Oh, just everybody's going to love it. Yeah. You know? No, I must get it yeah. loose here. Yeah. Careful there. Don't there throw all go. this magic away. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> you can see it's got this beautiful, like, thick... Yeah, do you want to tilt uh, that to the cameraman? You want to show that? Custard, keep, keep custard for consistency. Oh, I see. Beautiful, that is beautiful. Okay, cool. Hey, we're we showing off gonna, today, huh? 
So you I like can this. also fill a couple of small ramekins for okay. it. I just brought them along to show the guys. All right. That you can also do small desserts. So oh, you so can, you can actually like serve this yeah, uh, you individually. Yeah, some of those quarters right, in there pop as well. There for you. Okay. So I'm going to start there. pouring this over. Okay. Ooh, oh, and that look just looks delicious. And I say it so much, but the one thing I'm so saddened about when it comes to TV and cooking is the fact that they cannot smell how good this <laughs> is right now. Exactly. <laughs> so we're going to have to fill them in. Exactly. But let me tell you, we're talking about warm notes. We're talking about spicy yes. notes, inviting conversation. Caramel, Caramel vanilla. vanilla. Even that rooibos infusion yes. for me was something that I, uh, I found yeah, to be so, so special, man. African. Okay, yeah. and then we can pour some of the custard mixture Look at over that. there. <laughs> Over there. And Sorry over there. for laughing and giggling like a kid, but you've literally no. brought me back to that moment of nostalgia. <laughs> it kind of makes me feel of like a, and I've never experienced this, but I would just imagine if I was in a European winter in, during exactly. Christmas. Exactly. This is something I would want to have exactly. for sure. Oh, so that's man. what it looks like when it's baked. Well played. So the, uh, the, the, the custard makes this beautiful sauce at the bottom. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't, um, set completely, so when you cut into it, it's got this beautiful rooibos sauce at the bottom. And now we're going to decorate this. Okay. Oh, it does. We're not even done. No, yet. we're not done. All right. Not Keep done. it coming. Yes, done. please. Okay. Cool. So we're going to um, we're just going to put on some beautiful. Let me take a spoon for this. Okay. We're just going to layer on some some white chocolate, little Is bits this of white chocolate. chocolate. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a melted chocolate that we've done here on the side. And we're just going to sort of roughly spoon this on. There we go. Man, you're almost like embodying this, this, this energy of, of Santa Claus right now. And you've yeah. just gifted us with something absolutely delicious. Yeah. So thank you for that, man. Christmas oh. in, where are we? June. Yeah, Christmas in June. Come yeah. on, this is what it's so about. So I'm just going to smear this sort of all over. It doesn't need to be neat. It doesn't need to be tidy. This is just a beautiful home-cooked... Is it? Okay. And then we've made some cinnamon meringues back in my kitchen oh and pile. So you can help me okay. to pile those on. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These are like the chocolatey cherries on the top, right? Yes, exactly. Nice. And uh, done. they've got the most fantastic flavor inside. And Ooh. yeah, and they filled with cinnamon. And then just a last little bit, we can put some gold leaf on. Oh, of course, of course. We've got to show off. Yeah, the yeah, man's yeah, brought yeah, in yeah. all the tricks, all the bells and whistles. you grab that little bit. Okay, this one over here? Yes. All right, what do I do and with then, this? Uh, you just sort of touch, touch wherever and just pull away. And then hopefully it will get oh, yeah. stuck. And then, yeah, and then you just, yes, exactly. And then they just go and sit. Oh, and you just need a little bit. This is just a... Just for a little bit of decadence. Wow, a little bit of decadence? This feels like we've gone to <laughs> bourgeois school and back and got all the certificates for it. This is no longer food. This is an experience. This is an art piece. Fantastic. This is Maynard your you bear in the building. The Look at that of Zanzi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I cannot take all the credit for this, <laughs> but wow. I feel like I'm showing off some sort of an award right now. This yeah. is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and believe it or not, you can also try and make this at home too. I'm going to try and dig into this, but I'm Zanzi. Find this recipe yes. at expressoshow.com. It is everything that you want to have that beautiful there winter experience. It's a moment. But it's a deep. memory. Or oh, dig deep, he says. We're digging yeah. deep. <sighs> have a little cup. Thank you, man. You're welcome. Thank You're you. welcome. You're we'll welcome. see you later for some more culinary yeah. hot lap Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> yes, man. Well done. <laughs> Bespoke.
Bonjour. If you're as excited about the Rugby World Cup in France as we are, then listen up. Total Energies has an amazing opportunity just for you. You can join the Total Energies Loyalty Club today, spend 700 Rand or more, then you stand a chance to win double tickets to the highly anticipated South Africa vs. Ireland game on the 23rd of September in France. So get down to your nearest Total Energies today to make sure that you do not miss out on the experience of a lifetime. That competition closes on the 15th of July, so get on it. All the T's and C's do apply. Welcome back here, beauties. You are still linked up with your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Um, so let's pose a conundrum to you now, and hopefully this will make you feel even better or maybe get you second-guessing your financial <laughs> journey, whether it's a tax return, maybe a generous gift, a little bit of a bonus, even prize money every now and then. A bit of money, maybe a large amount of money, enters into our lives by surprise. How do we deal with that? Well, in today's Our Money Matters, we want to unpack how we would choose to spend this money and what that says about our relationship with money. So we, we tried this exercise with some money. Um, <laughs> yeah. We've lowered the amount. Just a bit okay, we found 10, 10 grand was just too irresponsible. Wait, yeah. um, but what that conversation did highlight was the fact that each one of us has a completely different angle or lens to look through when it comes to money and that speaks about our relationship and it's slightly yeah. different for everybody so first things first let's start with five grand okay and if you didn't have five grand when you woke up this morning and i gave you five grand right now you'd be happy right i would yeah, be, happy. be yeah. really really happy okay <laughs> would your instinct that's not my man <laughs> uh, would your instinct be spend or save um, I have a percentage proportion that I like to apply. So, for example, you know, like, I, I, I'll factor in 20% towards the tax saving, because, you know, you have to pay tax on it, so, mm -hmm. so that goes into that. 20% straight into a savings bank account, and then 10% to the church, and then 50% to play with. Oh, nice. Okay, I like that. Nice. That's a good split, actually. I like that. I'm actually huh? learning from A lot of people really... are going to change their answers. Yeah, I like that, that man. Feeling. I should just quickly... Uh, but look, <laughs> honestly, I, I love that, actually, and that's something I'm definitely going to learn from and add into my arsenal. But for me, right now, in my journey, I've already dedicated a lot of my uh, sort of investments into something, yeah. so it's all about paying it off and reducing the debt as chunk, best as chunk, I can. Chunk, chunk, chunk. So I've made yeah. that decision prior to make that sort of investment. So now it's just about clearing the debt, clearing the debt. Yeah, and it's a plan. It, it, regardless of what your plan is, have a plan. Yeah. As long as you've got a plan that you've mapped out, that you've worked out in accordance with your kind of season, where you're at, where you're spending, what mm. your mm. kind of assets are, I love that. Feeding off that, okay, um, now that we're starting to see an identity form within the way we see our money, if I could ask you to talk, maybe just define your relationship with money in one word. Ooh. Okay, and I know this is tough because people want to use an, a light and a dark. Huh. You kind of want yeah, a good and bad like, in this conversation. That is a but, good question. Um, but I'm going to force you now, one word. Just one word. Hmm. <laughs> That's not really a word, but I'll take it. I think a lot of people feel that about their money. <laughs> I feel like I need to justify the word. Mm. Unpredictable. Oh, yeah, that's wow. relevant. Oh. I have my moments where I am very responsible, and then I have my moments where I've actually been a little bit impulsive. Um, my, I, I actually find that my fiancé, he's very frugal. He thinks twice before he spends his money, and Thank when God. he does, it's mm. on quality things, whereas for me, sometimes I get a bit caught up in the quantity of things. Uh. Um, so, yeah, it is quite unpredictable. The three-for-one one special gets you. Yeah, no, what mood did you get me in? <laughs> Nine bottles of bleach under my, my sink because yeah, of that. Yeah, that, um, that's a tough one, and I love that question. I was going to go with something like volatile because it's yeah, like, wow. you know? But, like, honestly, I think frustration Ooh, is the okay. word that I actually have because you're frustrated in the way you manage something. You have a plan, but obviously life gets in the way and you have these obstacles, and then you get frustrated because now you have to kind of juggle and manage, and it's never a easy path it's never yeah, a yeah. simple a to b there's always things that happen and that's life right so that's why i say frustration because we have these plans frustration comes in but it's it's all about managing that right so that's where i find things happening but do you seem conscious about it which is a good thing i do think it think does this, help yeah this relationship with money has evolved has it changed over years are you better now <laughs> man, I was like three well, years you own ago. a house bro. this was me brother uh, all day <laughs> you know what i mean but now you realize that in order for me to keep that that stimulation i got from the initial spend i need to kind of let that sustain itself so how do i do that 
I need to look for longevity. I need to look for the future. So now it's like, nah, man, let's bring that back and, <laughs> and save it for longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's the mean? trajectory? It's a long term. Yes. Thing. Do you think your relationship with money has gotten better or worse? Um, definitely better. I think you also learn from the people around you. I mean, mm. naturally, you discuss, you don't have to talk numbers, but you discuss scenarios with friends and family, and, and you kind of learn from their mistakes or yes, you yeah, take I advice think, from yeah. them. So it's definitely evolved. Yeah, and you need mentors in this space. We're lucky enough to be surrounded by each other. And we talk about it every day, yeah. which I'm realizing more and more, very few people actually yeah. do. Even within relationships, people just don't talk about it because there is so much emotional baggage that comes with it. But I love the fact that we are talking about it every day. And for one person, a large amount of money is about to enter your life. And you're going to have to ask yourself these very same questions, hopefully very soon, because NetBank are giving you the chance to win 10,000 rand, not five grand this time, 10 grand. Okay, we up the ante. Tell us what your favorite feature of the brand new Nedbank My Goals account is. We've gone through a, a whole load of them, and you can enter on the Express or Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram pages using the hashtag Take Your Money Seriously. And the competition closes this morning at 11 a.m., so you don't have a huge amount of time. There will be about 10,000 plus entries for this one, so get on it. But you can find all the T's and C's at expressoshow.com. Good luck. Mabel, check this. With a MyGolds premium account, you get 12 free airport lounge visits. 12? Yeah. Good David, when are you busy planning your next getaway during office hours? Ah, uh, Aman. <laughs> Oh, yes, Mzanzi, we're going to carry on with the beautiful conversation that we've been having right throughout this morning and do it with someone very, very special, but we're going to go off the record. Get ready. <laughs> Well, it is time to go off the record, like Raul said. And in a recent interview with Bloomberg, actress extraordinaire Gabrielle Union spoke about how she has built her wealth over the years. What got her trending on Twitter was the fact that she mentioned that her and her husband, ex-baller Dwayne Wade, split everything 50-50. Now, before we get into this conversation, let's just give you a little bit of context. I think I just have more responsibilities, you know, for my money. So I get nervous, like, oh God, that, that movie didn't open, you know, well, what does that mean? Do I, am I, do I, do, am I gonna have enough to, to, to hold everybody up? And, and, and everyone's like, it's coming, like, calm down. And I'm trying to find peace in the journey, not using my anxiety and scarcity mindset to be my engine, which is hard. It's weird to say I'm head of household because in this household, we split everything 50-50. Whoa, interesting stuff indeed. Now, as you have obviously heard, this has gotten social media in an absolute frenzy, but why are people so pressed? Now, to help us bring this conversation offline and onto the show, we've got digital content producer Sebastian Newman and radio presenter Carissa Cupido in the building. Hello. Good morning, welcome, how are we doing? Hello, so good, how are you guys? So, so good. Listen, mm. this is some interesting stuff. Obviously, mm -hmm. the question is, what's going on here? Is mm. this okay? Is this mm. cool? Is it right or is this wrong? Yeah. For so many reasons, what's your opinion? <laughs> well, I think it's really important that we bring up the conversation of money in this day and yes. age because for so often it's been run by a very almost patriarchal way, right? Mm. Man is the head of the home and he takes care of the yeah. finances. And while some of us still kind of want to lean into that, I think it is important to address how are we splitting these bills today. In a case like Gabe Union, I don't know that it should go 50-50, though. If you consider her relationship with her man, his net worth is four times as much as hers. Oh, wow. So how are we going down the middle when we're not bringing in the same amount of money? And I think that should kind of be the direction of conversation people should be having. Equity over equality. Okay. Also, just a little bit more context. Yeah. All of this came about because of an argument that they had an argument, okay. right? So previously they were in Miami and he was like, this is my house. Mm -hmm. oh. And she was like, hold up, you will not say that to me again. When we move to LA, I'm putting in 50% so that you can't tell me that because okay. then it's our house. Mm -hmm. So it's almost as though an insecurity was created in a way. So I think we need to also understand that yeah. side of it and what, what the background mm. is here. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. And how that shifts the power dynamic within a relationship. It's so interesting you mentioned that because literally just last night, 
I had my girls, we were all together and we were talking about this. And, and I think, you know, we were, we were touching on this subject and I think something we said was that it should all be within proportion. Mm -hmm. so, so that's why we want to work around the percentage yeah. bargain mm -hmm. or the percentage number. But do you think our culture, our background, our religion, the way we were raised, the way, you know, our family structures are, has influenced something like that? Absolutely. If you look at religion coming from a Christian perspective, the man is the head of the household. Like we know this has been said many times. According to South African culture, in many of our households, the man is the head. Mm. And what does that mean when it comes to finances, you know? And I think also if we look at how many of our households are run by women mm. and not men, how does that actually play out? in single-headed households when there is no double income or there's no man present. So we always have to look at context to understand the situation better. Yeah. It is an interesting question for me because I come from an upbringing where I've seen that old school relationship sort of play out, mm -hmm. right? And you see the pros and the cons of it. Obviously, you can mention the cons, but the pros are exactly things that I don't think are always mentioned. Like, you, you have the ability for one partner to go and do something mm -hmm to their best ability because someone else is holding it down. Mm. How do you put a value on that? 100%. How, how, do, you, how do you put 100%. a value on the investment your partner's putting into you in order to allow you to make that cash? Mm. That's where I think this conversation gets tricky and that's why I think we need to possibly look at a new way of doing this. Mm. A new way of splitting the percentage. Yeah, yeah, what do you guys think? I mean, clearly the old way is bringing up too many issues and there's mm. so many variables that we haven't taken into account. Yeah. What do you think we should look at in terms of moving forward? How do we move forward with this? I think one thing also, if we just go back to the upbringing as well, is that maybe because you came from like a scarcity, mm. so now it's like you're always working and you're always like, yeah. guys, I can't slack because mm. in the interview she goes on to say that like, Besides her household with Dwayne Wade, she's got to feed her mom, her dad, her mm. sisters, yeah. all of that. And if she relaxes for just a little bit, mm. then somebody doesn't have food. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And so I think that it's also like all of those pressures. Yeah. But at the same time, she's still out there. And you know, she was in Neo song. She got her own thing. <laughs> <laughs> she was in the <laughs> thing. So she's still yeah. like, but hold up, I'm also going to still build my career and yeah, do that at the same time. Mm. You had your time, you did what you wanted mm. to do, you now retired. Mm. So give me a moment. Yeah. I like that, mm. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I think it depends on the dynamic. I mean, in some households you are offered the freedom. If a man is holding things down, go ahead and flourish and do your thing. In other households, it does become a power struggle. It becomes the man now makes the rules, tells you what to do, mm. tells you where to go. So it does depend on what's going on within your home. Yeah, yeah. very, very true. Oh. Well, please don't go anywhere. <laughs> Bas, Carissa, it's great having you both here as we go off the record. Of course, weigh in on this conversation. We love hearing your thoughts too. You're welcome to do so on our WhatsApp line. Our number is 63 
Oh, yes, I'm Sanzi. Welcome back to Feel Good Breakfast Show. Carrying on with this conversation that is officially going off the record. <laughs> yes, it's the segment where we speak about 50-50 conversation. And uh, earlier, we obviously covered the actress Gabrielle Union and how her partner and her ex-NBA star Dwayne Wade, obviously the partner of hers, uh, are going half on everything. So we are hearing his response right now and obviously his side of what he had to say. Let's check this one out. Right. Okay, so I understand what 50-50 means. Right. 50-50 right. means that everything in life, you got your half and I got my half. Right. And we're going to put shit together right. to try to make 100. Right. Okay. We buy 200 of our worth of groceries, you put in 100, I put in 100. That's how 50-50 goes. That's how we look That at. is not how our relationship works. <laughs> All right, we don't uh, see everybody think 50-50. They think, hey, if he getting a sandwich, you got to put 50% on that. Right. He got he got a 100, 200, whatever people think I got. Right. That's not how it works. Right. 50-50 in our household is, first of all, let's say I have 20 to 50 responsibilities. Right. And my wife have 20 to 50 responsibilities. And when I say that, that means she has a mother, she has a sisters, she has her dad. She has, her, she has a lot of things that she's responsible for. Right. You know what she does? Right. She pays 100% of that. Right. You know what I do? I pay 100% of my life. Hmm. Okay. There we go. Well, listen, we asked you to weigh in on the conversation, and that's exactly what you did. So let's take a look at our Facebook page. We have Jolene say, if they're happy with their agreement, then I think it's fine. People are always going to have opinions. They need to do what works for them. Patience says, I think 50-50 just means we carry the load together without really counting who is paying more than the other. If something needs to be paid for, I just pay for it, and my partner does the same. No calculation. That's the first couple of quick comments. Yeah, they keep on coming through. Shell Govan also says 50-50 is their way of showing love, irrespective of who earns more. Partnership is love. And then Bernadine uh, says he should pay more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. Yes. I love that, Bernadine. Man's <laughs> got money, bring it on. Yes. <laughs> now, is this, a, is, is this a matter of, you know, this partner earns more, they need to pay more, or, or what are we getting at here? Like, because that is what the whole debate is about. Mm. People have an issue with the 50-50. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I think also it comes down to the fact that like, the interview goes on and he says that he'll go and he'll be like, you know what, we're going on a trip this weekend. He puts $200 into the trip. She's like, no, I'm also going to put $200 into the trip and let's have a better trip. Do you oh, know what I mean? Okay, like amplify it. Yes, okay. like, if okay. we can, let's do it. So I think that there's also that side of it. And in the sense of your question, Zoe, I think it's like, in your relationship, are you not building together? Yeah. Are you not, like, if we're deciding to be married, yeah. are we not building a future and a life together? Mm. So if you are earning more, there's obviously a certain lifestyle that you can attain yeah. and that I can, but if we come together, we can do the most. It can be liquor for all of us. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think money is not the only thing that we can think about. Um, invisible labor is a real thing mm. yeah. that women often take on in the household. Like, you see a space that's clean all the time, that doesn't just happen. Yeah. You have socks in your drawer, that doesn't what just happen. What is it? Happen. Not just a fairy, is it? Oh. Not just a fairy, sorry to break it to you. But things happen seamlessly because mm. women often put in that work. So if we're going to talk about money and we're going to talk about men's effort, also talk about the effort women put in. So maybe it's not a conversation of 50-50. Maybe it's not down the middle. Maybe it mm. is, this is what I bring to the table. What are you bringing? Yeah. And let's take it from there. And maybe somehow ascertain a value to exactly. what that is that you're bringing through. It's I like invaluable. this conversation. Well, maybe it okay. just, like, evens <laughs> out. It evens out. It evens out. The thing out. is, again, for me, at the end of the day, relationship essentially means that you're unifying two into one. Uh -huh. So, essentially, everything should just add to that one basket, ideally. But and why are we counting? Yeah, like... <laughs> you know what? Our, our past traumas have, have led us to this point mm. because, yes, we are in this bubble together. Yes, we're in a union, but the the problem often stems when that relationship's no longer fruitful. Mm -hmm. Then people turn around and be like, this is what I, I paid for this. And then it becomes, yeah. yeah, that resentment kicks in. So I think that's why, I, I, at least from Gabrielle's side, I can understand why she would want to do something 50-50, mm -hmm. whether it is 50-50 in terms of to the cent or just meet her partner with equal effort mm -hmm. so that when things happen, don't work out, you can say we've done equal efforts, everything that's there 
should be split. And in the mm. end of the interview, he says, "You are, she's out there building, she's out there building, and I'm spinning, he keeps referring to his cheese. Mm. It's like, I'm spinning my cheese, so you come back. And then he alludes to the fact, like, if this doesn't work out, mm. you've got 200 cheese, mm. and I've got nothing, because I spent it on all these things. And yeah. I'm like, why are you now even what? thinking yeah, about... to the end. Oh, like, what? I see what you say. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. And you can't help it. I mean, like, there's no guarantees in life. And I yeah. think it's just everyone's way of looking out for themselves. Mm. I think we've learned from the past. <laughs> All about the prenup. I oh. absolutely love this conversation, guys. Thank you so much. As much fun as we have for this off-record conversation, I think it applies so pertinently to all of us, whether we are in a relationship or looking for one. I think, like Zoe also mentioned earlier and everybody else on our panel, the most important thing is communication. It is to have your own relationship and your own understanding and ascertain what value you're both bringing to it and add it to that one beautiful basket that you can create. I don't know, it's an option, but it's your relationship. You decide. Guys, thank you so much for this thank conversation. You. I absolutely loved it, and let's push on! <laughs> Oh, before we completely destruct your relationship with this kind of financial complexity, let's lighten the load just a little bit, take the edge off. And I think every South African knows firsthand that when you gather around a cup of coffee and you open up a box of Omar Rusks, so just like this one, and start to share, that's when the stories begin to flow. We had the most magical moment on air last week. We, each one of us, brought through a very special item, something that means the world to us that gave us an opportunity to share a really special memory. We absolutely loved it, and we wanted to put it to you guys, ask you the same question. So let's connect with you right now and see what you had to say, and I cannot wait for this. But Jorza says, boxing fitness, because people used to say that boxing is for men and not for women. Are we talking about our 50-50? I told myself I will show someday, and I promised myself and I proved myself I'm now a female boxer. Hashtag more than a rusk. I love that we want to see videos. Salona Governor, my recipe book. Scribbles magazine, cuttings of recipes, etc. I've always had a passion for cooking and baking. Grew up watching my family members cook all the time as well. Cooking is my story. Please make it into a story. Make it into a book. Imagine being able to go back into this little time capsule when you're older or take your kids through it. Amazing. I love that, Salona. Shereen Pillai saying, a pair of diamond earrings my mum gifted me on my 21st. That's special. And I still have them safely kept away. I will wear them on a special occasion. That is beautiful. That echoes my watch story. I love that. Linda Yobe saying, my handbag, I think. Haha, <laughs> laugh, laugh. It's a disarray, and I think it reflects my personality. I store everything in there. I have a feeling you're not alone. Then Freddie Alford weighing in there a notebook. I remember everything you said or things you've done to me. I will remind you about it. Hashtag more than a rusk. That sounds like quite an ominous story time, but I love the fact that you've taken a moment to just relax. And of course, I introduced a story about my watch that I'd received as a, a hand-me-down from my grandfather. Um, and it amazingly stopped on the date and the time that I got married. And I didn't figure this out until the day of my wedding. You can imagine how that felt to have my grandfather present in such a powerful way. Sometimes these markers, these things give us an anchor in that memory, in that emotion. And it is so worth going back there and remembering that. So please, the next time you pour yourself a fresh cup and you whip out a beautiful Omar Rusk, take a moment to just reflect and remember where you've come from and maybe go through this exercise yourself. If you could pick one item that tells a story about who you are, what would it be and why? Share that story with us on our Express, our Facebook, the Twitter, or our Instagram platforms and use hashtag more than a Rusk and you could stand a chance of winning yourself. Firstly, our Omar Rusk's hamper plus 2,000 Rand in cash. But you can find those T's and C's on expressoshow.com. Happy dunking. There is more in every dip with Omar Rusks.
Now you can generously give a voice to story time. Visit our library of homegrown audio stories at cadbury.co.za. Welcome back. Thank you so much for rejoining the conversation. Um, time to get excited about a cultural exploration. The widely anticipated Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival will run from the 30th of June up until the 9th of July. And this year is a very special focus on the musical talents of extraordinary women. We are here for that. And to shed some more light on this amazing event is renowned pianist Nina Schumann and a master cellist Peter Martins. Both are the art directors of the Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival. I'm sure very proud today. Alongside them are two students, Karen Peterson and Georgia Vantanar. Vantanar. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, just listening to the sound check coming in, uh, my opinion of chamber music has been changed completely. Just that feeling, the emotion of stepping into that kind of musical experience is truly special. So well done. To get to this point is amazing. And thank you for opening a window into your world. Peter, I'm going to start with you. For the uninitiated, what can one expect from the Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival? What's going down? Well, every day is jam-packed. Uh, <laughs> we start in the mornings with, with orchestra rehearsals, and then as from lunchtime, there are performances. So we have student concerts um, at, at 1 o'clock and student concerts at 5 o'clock. We have lectures. We have uh, public master classes oh. uh, during the day. But the real big thing is the, um, is the faculty concert in the evening. Every evening we have a concert, and we have a star-studded faculty we have artists from all over the world, from the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra in New York City to Moscow Conservatoire to Germany uh, to the UK. Really, we've got a fantastic array of beautiful musicians who come together just like the students do because the festival is actually an experience for, for education and it for learning as ways. well. It goes yeah, both ways. I love that. So we also get together in groups rehearsing only two or three days before our concerts. And the faculty concerts... We have most of the students in the audience, and then we, we sell, sell out to the public, of course. And it is just such an amazing experience because this music that perhaps people consider to be old-fashioned yeah. or, or, or to be for, for connoisseurs... We're just disconnected. It's, it, yeah. it's, not, it's not at all. The audience goes wild like at a soccer match. You can't believe it. It's, yeah. it's marvellous for us when we play, and, and, and it's obviously marvellous for them if you, if you judge the reaction. Um, uh, there is an experience involved with this kind of music. We undersell it horribly when we say faculty and students. We are talking about some of the best musicians in the country, in the world at the moment, in this art form. We have chosen to hero woman in this space. Why is this so important? Why are you brimming with pride and happiness right now, Nina? Well, it was um, actually something that just happened uh, naturally. And um, I think this is the wonderful thing about the festival is that um, it has really, over the span of 18 years, it's um, evolved very naturally. Um, Organically, I love that. Yes. Um, I uh, performed with a, a woman conductor last year in Johannesburg, Rebecca Tong. And then I realized that we had never had a, a woman conductor. And so I invited her. Then at the same time, I also invited a young South African composer who resides in uh, New York, Michaela Smith. And uh, for the compositions that we commission, we always try and showcase one South African that I call uh, part of the forgotten ones. And the subject of this composition this year is Tina Skull. Um, who is a, a very prominent jazz singer and um, activist. Um, so this, this thing is just, to this. yeah, it's just it become absolutely um, this celebration of, of women. What it says to me is this is happening now. This isn't something that played out a narrative that played out a century ago that we're dipping our, our toes back into. This is the frontier of where this music is being created and almost processed through a new generation. Georgia, no pressure. Um, no, not only performing against all of the students who you, you obviously connect with in that, that family, but now you've got some of the best of your, your lecturers, that intellectual body, um, some of the best performers. How amazing is it to share a stage with everybody, share this energy, be a part of this kind of moment? It's, it's amazing, definitely. I think it's a big honor to share the stage with such amazing musicians. So, yeah. 
It's magical when you see the performance and you get to experience that. And I think for young people, especially those that are interested in music, to look at it through this lens, what is it about this kind of music, Colin, that drew you in? Is it because you can? Is it because there is an emotional anchor somewhere within this? What, what connects you so powerfully? What leads to this kind of passionate performance in this space for you? Um, well, I believe I've been blessed with a gift um, and also that musicality. Yeah, um, yeah. Nina is my lecturer, so we connect a lot about that. But I think the, the kind of music um, by Brahms and um, people like Tchaikovsky or, uh, you know, Arensky, that kind of music, it connects to that part of that gift that I have. And that gives me joy. Um, to, to be able to play those specific progressions, it, it gives me joy. And so that's what I truly enjoy. And then also making music with fellow musicians that have the same heart. Yeah. That with, that's what gives you fuel to keep on going. It's purpose. It is yeah. purpose. There is purpose behind this kind of music. And I cannot wait to, for you to see the faces of the people hearing this as it is now. This is not a historical journey into the past. This is an opportunity to look where music is going now and to add layers that are just absolutely amazing. Uh, Peter, very quickly, how do we get tickets um, and how do we connect? Uh, have a look at our website, www.sicmf.co.za. All the details are on there. There are links to the tickets. The tickets are sold at web tickets. Right. You can also come along on any particular day to the Endler Hall, uh, which is on the corner of Victoria and Nietling Street in Stellenbosch. It's the conservatorium building at the university. But I would advise you go to web tickets first because these concerts will sell out. For sure. I know there is a captive audience and hopefully that is going to grow through this process. I mean, we can talk all we want, but ultimately what you need to hear and experience is a performance and we have got plenty coming your way this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for getting so dressed up this early in the morning. We appreciate that as much as anything else. Um, something truly special headed your way, but let's get back into those official duties. Uh, perfect timing and thank you so much for that conversation. I cannot wait for that performance that's coming in just a sec after these headlines. And speaking of headlines, let's dive straight into it once again. And national headlines up first. And the Chuanea Metro Police Department says more than 50 of its officers will be dismissed in the next two months due to corruption. Now, Johannesburg Metro Police says six officers have already been shown the door in this financial year. Now, the chiefs of the three metro police departments of Chuane, Johannesburg and Ekuruleni in Gauteng appeared before the Standing Committee on Community Safety in the Gauteng Legislature. Now, this was to give account of their individual crime fighting and by-law enforcement operations for the period January to March this year. While sticking to national news headlines, President Zora Ramaphosa says investments by the Netherlands and Denmark will help create a green hydrogen fund worth some 18 billion rand for SA projects. Now, he says the country hopes to benefit from collaboration on renewable energy with the two countries. And Ramaphosa hosted Prime Ministers Mark Rutte of the Netherlands and Mette Frederiksen of Denmark in Pretoria yesterday. Now, the three countries are looking to solidify relations in the production of green hydrogen, renewable energy, and a just energy transition, and have signed memorandums of understanding. Well, from our national news headlines, let's head over to international news. And the U.S. Coast Guard is using all possible resources in its search for the tourist submarine, which is missing off the southeastern Canadian coast. Now, there are five people in the submarine, two crew and three tourists which undertakes expeditions to view the wreck of the Titanic. Now, it sank in 1912 and is lying at a depth of 3,800 meters. And British billionaire Hamish Harding and a Pakistani businessman Shahzada Dawood and his son Suleiman are the three tourists on the submarine. Now, they paid $250,000 each for the eight-day expedition. Well, we definitely are sending our condolences and hope that that rescue is a success. For now, though, we carry on with our headlines and over to Kenya, where on Monday, Kenya signed an economic partnership agreement with the European Union that would guarantee duty-free access for its farm produce into its biggest export market. Now, European goods entering Kenya will see tariffs in reduced over a 25-year period under the agreement, an official said at a signing ceremony in the Kenyan capital of Nairobi. Now, the deal took seven months to negotiate, making it one of the fastest the EU has ever entered into. And Kenya's, uh, Af well, Kenya, which is Africa's seventh largest economy, is a major exporter of tea, coffee, flowers, fruits, and vegetables. 
Well, lastly in our headlines for this hour, Baltimore homeowners in Maryland in the U.S. spotted a distressed adult deer circling a storm drain and called emergency services upon hearing the cries of her trapped fawn. Now, after prying open the gate atop the drain, firefighter Owings Mills climbed down and emerged carrying the baby deer. Now, a video shows mother deer waiting nearby on the grass, retreating at first when Mills approaches. And then she spots a baby in his arms and moves up closer. Now, mom and baby happily, happily reunite and jog away together, leaving tough firefighters with tears of joy in their eyes. Well, that's all I have for you with these headlines. But, of course, they will continue. We'll touch base another hour for more. But for now, though, time to dive in the sport and see what's happening with the latest. Well, I know a lot of us feeling pretty nervy moving into the next phase of the rugby season. Why? Because Sia Khaleesi is a possible injury doubt, but he says he is confident that he will be ready for the World Cup as he continues his recovery from that knee injury in the Springbok camp in Pretoria currently. So Khaleesi has stepped up his recovery during the Pretoria-based Springbok camp, where a squad of 41 has now assembled to prepare for, firstly, the Rugby Championship, and then, of course, the all-important World Cup. Now, you might remember in 2019, Khaleesi was in a similar race against time to get fit at the same camp in the same city and recovered to lead the Springboks to their World Cup victory in Japan. I'm going to take it as a sign. Keep on pushing, my brother. Now we turn to football and throw forward to next season. In fact, the next four seasons, as Mamelodi Sundance have now announced a four-year contract extension for coach Rulani Mokwena. So Mokwena began last season as a co-coach, along with Mankoba Mkriti and Steve Kompela. In a coaching reshuffle in October last year, saw him become that sole head coach, after which, of course, he led Downs to their sixth straight league title. The Brazilians' 71 points left him a point short of their own record, in fact, of 72 for the 16-team PSL set in 2015 and 2016. McGuena also steered Sundowns to the semi-finals of the CAF Champions League, exiting uh, agonizingly close on away goals to Verata Athletic of Morocco. Now, speaking of milestones within football, uh, it's going to be difficult to duplicate this one. Cristiano Ronaldo became the first ever men's player to reach 200 international caps. That was when he led Portugal in their Euro 2024 qualifier up against Iceland. So the skipper marked the occasion by netting a 89th minute winner, as he does. Uh, in fact, it was his 123rd goal for his country. As a tribute to his historic accomplishment, Ronaldo was presented with an official certificate as a complimentary record holder by Guinness World records probably one of the few things he doesn't have and then additionally he received a portugal shirt adorned with the number 200 prints and prominently on the back symbolizing his record-breaking caps then christine lilly holds the overall record with get this 354 international caps i doubt we'll see that being broken now we return to the battle royale that concluded in the first ashes test yesterday and it was Australia's captain, Pat Cummings, who sealed a remarkable two-wicket victory for the side over England in a thrilling climax to what has been a gripping five-day battle in the opening Ashes Test. So the visitors set a target of 281. They began a rain-delayed day on 107 for three, but their chances looked remote when they were reduced to 227 for eight. But that's when Cummings stepped in with bat in hand this time in partnership with Nathan Lyon. They launched an incredible fight back, and these are two bowlers, bear in mind, and they sealed that victory with an unbeaten 44. Four. And then with the bat in hand as well, uh, Usman Kowaja was named as player of the match after scoring that all-important 141 in the first innings and then a 75, uh, 65 in that second, which proved equally as vital. Well, that's where we leave our sport for now. We'll touch on those headlines again at 8 o'clock. Right now, the roads should be waking up. Let's get you to work safely and then get a beat on the weather. Thank you, Graham. Well, let's look at your roads in Diepkloof, Johannesburg. There's been a multi-vehicle accident. It's on the N3 northbound at the Galulis Interchange. The left shoulder is closed. Please drive carefully. Then moving to Cape Town in Athlone, there's some congestion on the N2 inbound at Jake's Harval Drive. Do expect delays. And staying in the Western Cape, there are multiple road closures in and around the Western Cape. They're on your screen right now. Please take note of it and plan accordingly. Well, that's your traffic. Let's take another look at your weather.
And the SA Weather Service has issued no warnings for alert or alerts for today, although the cold weather will persist for a while longer. Meanwhile, hundreds of residents of the Spooky Town informal settlement in Rawsonville in the Western Cape are sheltering in a local church hall after the Smallbar, Smallblar River burst its banks. Some 300 families have been evacuated and humanitarian relief efforts are underway. The Western Cape government says the cost of heavy rains and flooding could cost the agriculture sector up to 1 billion rand. Colin Diner, head of disaster management in the Western Cape, says 14 roads in the province are still closed. He went on to explain that disaster management plans are put into action based on various factors after warnings are received. After that, role players such as the Army, Health Services and volunteers are involved in the execution of the plans. Well, that's your traffic and your weather update. Let's look at today's temperatures. Starting off in Polokwane, a low of 6, a high of 22. Mbombela, 11, reaching a high of 24. Pretoria, 7, with a high of 20. Johannesburg, sunny, a low of 5, a high of 19. Mahiking, 2, 23. Klerstorp, 0, 21. Kimberley, minus 1, with a high of 17. Bloemfontein, minus three, reaching a high of 17. Richards Bay, your low is 14, your high 24. Peter Maritzburg, 622. Durban, 14, with a high of 22. Mtata, six, reaching a high of 20. If you're in East London, nine is your low, 19, your high. Craddock, 417. Kabecha, rainy conditions, six, with a high of 18. If you're in George today, seven's your low, 15 your high with some rain. Cloudy conditions for Cape Town, nine with a high of 14. Worcester, 714. Sutherland, 514. And Uppington, a low of three and a high of 22 degrees Celsius. Well, those are your temperatures. Let's look at your sunrise views. Ridwan out in Dubai, always sharing views of his favorite breakfast look. And look at this, absolutely stunning. Thank you for that. Then Ruwain from Westbury is feeling positive with these pretty soft yellow shades in the sky. And then Ruben in Gauteng snapped this photo and shared it with us. Look at those gentle, fluffy clouds. Clint in Kabecha spent his morning by the ocean capturing memorable memories and decided to share it with us. So thank you for that, Clint. If you have a sunrise view to share with us, let us know on WhatsApp. Our number's on your screen right now. That's 63 408 Oh, thank you so much. So we promised some truly magical musical experiences this morning, and that is what you're about to get. Joining us on the Espresso stage is Peter Martins. He is a masterful cellist and, of course, the director of the Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival that we spoke about a moment ago. And, of course, he is going to open our account this morning with the Bach Prelude from the first suite for solo cello. Peter, take it away.
exquisite. It's cracked a little bit of a smile, just a little bit of a smile. Absolutely beautiful. It's becoming very clear to me that this is a music art form that is a lived experience. You need to experience it yourself so you can get your tickets at Web Tickets from the 30th to the 9th of July. It'll be taking place at the End Hall at Stellenbosch University Conservatorium. It is the Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival. Get your tickets now. Peter, well done. Thank you. Exquisite. Oh, Good breakfast show, and you are just in time for another installment of the culinary hotline bling. Tea, tea, tea. Uh, we're still warming them up, but it's okay. We are getting things heated in the kitchen with winter milk based desserts, and we have a very special guest, Chef Maynard Hubert. And I mean, I am so excited to for you to demonstrate because he's going to show us how to make. The rooibos tea milk tart recipes. Yes, oh, yes. This is incredible. Yeah, so this is a recipe I grew up with. It's one of my mom's friend's recipes. And, and I've just uh, changed it up a little bit with putting in the, the rooibos tea, mm. which I love. I just love the milky flavors with the rooibos tea. And it's so South African. It just makes sense. I mean, me. you're making a double South African. Because, yes, I mean, yes, milk tart yes. is so South African. And now you're adding the rooibos to it. I have to admit, I've never had rooibos milk tart. So this is Are sounds... Are you going to taste it today? I'm going to taste it today. <laughs> Okay, Definitely. fantastic. So we've got in here, you can just fish those out for us. Those have been cooking for a while. So you want to, obviously, how much how much rooibos tea? Yeah, so we've got about five or six tea bags in there. The, yeah, it, it can be really strong. And then we've used the tin from the condensed milk, which we've decanted over here. So you use two tins of water. Uh, to uh, cook your rooibos tea in. And then from there, it's going to be really easy. We're just going to start adding on. So you can empty out the condensed milk into the rooibos tea. And then you have to vigorously stir because it can easily stick to the bottom. Okay. That's just the one thing about this recipe. You have to keep on stirring like a... Like a madman. <laughs> madman, <laughs> madwoman, just keep stirring. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to and try to get as much as... I, this is always my thing. It's like, I, I feel like we need to get as much out of the bowls. When I was a kid, I wanted my mom to leave as much into the bowls. Exactly. But now I understand you want to get as much of the ingredients into the bowl. Exactly. So basically, we're making a custard, uh, which we are going to set. This is a no, a no bake... Um, cheesecake. Uh, oh, oh, milk oh, tart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you almost said cheesecake. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, which is lovely. So you can, you can make it in advance. It's lovely when you entertain. Mm. And um, yeah, it's just an, an all round easy recipe to do. Okay, cool. Now you can add the butter that's over here. So that's one heaped tablespoon of butter, okay. which is just gonna add a lovely creaminess to it. And then there's vanilla over here, which you can also add. I thought adding that. Yes, over there. And then always with, uh, with uh, sugary desserts, I love putting in uh, a substantial amount of salt. That's about okay. a, uh, almost a teaspoon of salt, just to, just to balance out all the flavors. And then to this, we are now gonna add two, oh uh, no, three heaped tablespoons of corn flour, which we have um, whisked up here with two egg yolks. Okay. All right, so, so that's gonna, okay, let's melt that butter. We're gonna, it's, it's almost there, it's almost there, almost chef. There, almost, almost there, almost there. Yeah. Uh, with, the, with the egg whites, we've whipped them as well, and then we're just gonna stir that in gently at the end, and that's gonna give it a beautiful sort of an aerated, lovely, um, Texture. I love this. We okay, are this doing perfect. the culinary hotline, so you if stand. you have any questions for Chef Maynard, why don't you let us know on our WhatsApp line. Our number is 063-408-8863. Of course, the chef is here to answer any of the questions you might have. Perhaps you have a question from the earlier dish that Raul and Chef Maynard made, or perhaps you have a question about our rooibos milk tart. Don't worry, we will have this recipe available for you. It will be on our website, expressoshow.com. So, Chef, I feel like it's really intensified. Yeah, it I is. Just it's keep it's stirring. coming to you together quite quickly. Okay, right? we want that custard here. It's getting yes, thicker. Yes, I hope the yes. Camera can get that. That's beautiful, beautiful. We can turn that off. Wonderful, job Ooh. well done. It's a little lumpy, but yeah, is that no, normal? No, 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 that's fine, we'll stir it out. Okay, you can pass it to me. Now, go. yeah, it's got a beautiful texture, you can see there. We're just vigorously gonna stir it so the that there's- has got the right arm for it. No. Nee. <laughs> <laughs> if gentle. there's any lumps or anything, we're just gonna get rid of it quickly. That's exhausting. Sure. Yeah, if there are lumps, off. you can also just put it through a, um, a sieve. Um, but, uh, okay, yeah, let's use this. Okay, and then we're gonna empty that out into our bowl Look over Look at here. that beautiful custard. Beautiful, eh? Yes. And you'll see it's really quick and really easy to make. So we're playing with right. rooibos here. Oops. Is this a recipe you could perhaps, you know, infuse different flavors, or yeah. should you rather just? Definitely, definitely. I recently discovered something. You can sort of gently scrape that in here while I stir. I recently discovered uh, tonka beans. Have you ever heard of a tonka bean? I have not. A friend of mine in Canada brought it, and it is the most delicious delicious bean. It, it, it smells like burnt vanilla and Ooh. cinnamon and bourbon. So yeah, you can definitely put tonka beans in here. And uh, you can even put a little bit of brandy in here Ooh. if you want to take it further, a little bit of caramel essence. Yeah, but I think that is perfect. That is looking good. Now, yes. now Chef, talk me through the base. What base did we use for okay, our Okay, so tart? the base over here is the traditional sort of tennis biscuit base with the, with the butter that you just crush up and you... And just mold it. So you can even take that a step further and you can... Um, you can do it with uh, ginger biscuits, Ooh. which will be nice, yeah. Ginger so, and rooibos yeah. tea, also a winning. I mean, I love a good ginger biscuit yeah. with my cup of tea. Exactly. Okay, so we're gonna spoon those in there. And then you just need to sort of let these rest in the, in the fridge for about an hour. You can also do it overnight. And like I say, you can prep it in advance. This will last in your fridge for at least two to three days. Mm. So if you want to prep for your guests in advance, yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. And then we've got some uh, <clears throat> interesting decorating things over here. You can sort of hold the paper for me there in half, and then we're just going to dust it with uh, with a bit of cinnamon. I say there, and the next one. Oh, look at that! Yeah, okay. you can do the next we one as well. Let's do two. Let's do two. Let's do two. A nice Just handy to make little it trick. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yesterday we baked some uh, beautiful shortbread biscuits that we decorated with some Edible some gold glitter. glitter. You said you loved it. I glitter. love the uh, glitter. Me too. Anything sparkly, <laughs> you've got me. Yeah, so we're just gonna sort of layer oh. those on top. And then you can do that one. Oh, fantastic. Chef, yes. I love this little tip. And this is just normal cinnamon that you've Yeah, you've just normal cinnamon. Oh, we start no, job. that's perfect. That's <laughs> perfect. There's no wrong way of doing it. There we go. 
Fantastic. And you have made your beautiful rooibos tea. <gasps> My rooibos tea. Golden hot oh. milk tart. Chef, I have to try this Easter. with a little Easter. bit of a crust. Yes. Look at that beautiful... It's got a nice little bounce to it. It does, no. Oh. Mm. What do you think? This it's is good, incredible. Eh? I love the rooibos flavor yeah, coming yeah, through. Yeah. The biscuit, it all just works. I mean, for me, it's also all about texture. Yes. It's got a nice creaminess to it. And then you have that biscuit to really just bring some texture into it. Exactly. Wow, chef, this is unbelievable. If you want to get your hands on our rooibos milk tarts, it is available on your website, Express. in fact, our website, mm. expressoshow.com. <laughs> chef Maynard's not going anywhere because we have one more culinary hotline bling. Chin, chin, chin. They're warming up. They're warming up. We'll get there. Welcome back. I love coffee. I love coffee so much. It flows through my veins, which is why I love the fact that our family has grown just a little bit over recent months. Every good morning starts with a great cup of coffee. It has to, in fact, for me and for years. South Africans have loved our trusted Jacobs Gold and Kroening instant freeze-dried coffee. Top of the heap for me. And soon you're going to be spoiled for choice because they have launched their brand new Origins range, which includes a Southeast Asia and Latin America inspired blend. And here to tell us all about it is someone who is, okay, yes, more emotionally invested in coffee than I am, senior brand manager for Jacobs, Matthew Dees. Matthew, to be a please show us your socks, dude. Just to <laughs> prove to everyone that there is someone who loves coffee more than me. I don't know if anyone can see that. Uh, I love it. Yeah. Uh, buddy, 
congratulations. Thanks. Um, I've had a chance to connect with your amazing team. I can see how much these moments matter to you. Yeah. Uh, why is this so exciting for you, man? No, this this launch really, um, you know, we've we've looked at all the the, the trends that, that people are, um, you know, in the market with with coffee, and one of the emerging trends that we found is that people are looking for something a little bit special um, with their mm. coffee, and um, single origins really delivers that coffee that can be traced back to a particular region of the world. Um, you know, people are very interested in that because they they have their own sort of unique characteristics, a, right? The level of nuance, yeah, through your masterclasses, the nuance in every bean is insane. Yeah, 100%. And we've chosen two quite distinct regions and sort of on opposite sides of the world, right? So Latin America is sort of more smoother um, kind of coffee, um, whereas in Southeast Asia, it's a bit more bolder and strong. So yeah, quite distinct, but, but, but you know, sort of uh, very uh, distinct characteristics, yeah. Um, I love that. You are able to, and, and I love the, the flavor of Journey is amazing. And I can't wait to be giving them a very honest, um, no holes barred assessment of each. Yeah. Um, and I have a feeling this is going to speak to the coffee lover, but also introduce people to maybe fl flavor profiles they didn't. You guys are able to capture that, fl that flavor, that quality in a way like few others are in the instant space. How are you able to do this? Um, so, you know, with, with the Origins range, for example, we've sort of, we've seen that, um, you know, uh, our, our Jacob's Crooning, which people really love, um, we've brought out something that can match that in the, in the Southeast Asia range, which, which um, you know, is a bit more bolder and stronger. And with, uh, with the Jacob's Gold Lovers, um, you know, they can really try the, the Latin America, which is a lot more smoother and milder um, to, the to the palate. So that's why we've sort of captured those two sort of distinct flavor profiles that we know that South Africans love. I was going to ask you for your advice because you must have to kind of go through these journeys of self-discovery whenever you introduce new ranges. What would you say to the person who only has their croning, who only has their gold, who only sticks in their lane? And, and you've got ranges across all forms now. Yeah. But why dip your toe into these waters? Why do you think people should just try something slightly different? No, I think it's, um, I think, you know, uh, we, we, th they really should because with coffee, it's all about experimentation, right? So you want to try different different blends, um, especially from around the world and, um, sure. you know, to, to just get that, um, yeah, to, to discover what you like. So, uh, yeah, I think these two really give quite different taste profiles, but um, but I'm sure people will, will really love them and I encourage them to go out and try them. One for every day of the week, man. You're just exactly, <laughs> exactly. Or for every that. time of the day. So, uh, oh, yes. yeah, so the, the, the bold and strong, you know, the bold and strong sort of Southeast Asia blend for early mornings and the, the Latin America for maybe in the afternoon when you're looking to unwind a little bit, yeah. Gonna ease out of that day. Um, I, I, yeah. I love the fact that you've been able to take what feels like the premium coffee experience and bring it into the instant. The difference between freeze-dried instant coffee and spray-dried, this seems to make a difference here. No, 100%. So all of, um, of, of Jacob's products are 100% uh, freeze-dried. Um, there's no added ingredients at all. Um, the, 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 the preparation method for freeze-dried instant coffee is, is superior. Um, it does take a bit longer, but it produces those wonderful big granules that you're used to seeing in the, oh, in the sure. Jacob's jars. Spray-dried is a bit more harsh on the coffee, and uh, it tends to sort of produce smaller, crumblier, kind of softer granules that uh, sort of dissolve in your fingers. Um, and it, it can lose some of that wonderful flavor and aroma. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, 100% freeze-dried coffee is, uh, is, is the whole of the Jacob's instant range, which, um, yeah, which we you know, believe is the best. Well, well, the shoppers believe it's the best. That's the reason why you guys sit at that, that pinnacle in this space and why I think you've made so many inroads in other areas of this amazing, I want to call it like a, a, a coffee renaissance because it feels like people are loving their coffee more now than ever before. 100%. Your favorite? My favorite. Oh, put me on the spot. Eh? <laughs> um, I, I really, it just depends on the time of day and your mood. I, I can't put a particular favorite because, um, you know, I could have a favorite in the morning, I could have a favorite in the afternoon. Um, yeah, I can't. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna put that there because it just depends on your on your mood and the time of day and uh, and where you're at. So. And, and your flavor palette. I love the fact that. Uh, and you're a typical salesman. I went from buying one uh, for every day of the week to buying every one for every day of the week. <laughs> Very good. Um, you will not be disappointed. And I can speak from experience. Yeah, we've had an opportunity to walk this journey. This almost feels like a new season for Jacobs at the front of this coffee queue. And their Jacob's Instant Origins range will be available in all leading retailers nationwide. So make sure that you just give it a try, regardless of the time of day. And after the break, we'll be making ourselves a cuppa to just uh, do a little taste test as we, it's in fact our responsibility. Uh, buddy, well done. And Thank congrats, you so much. man. <laughs> Introducing new Jacob's Origins. 
for those who recognize the authentic taste and aroma from Latin America and Southeast Asia. Magical Jacob's Aroma. Oh, yes, Nzaji, welcome back to it. It's time to celebrate the talent that we have right here. And joining us on the Expresso stage right now, we've got a singer, classical pianist, and a vlogger. We're talking about Corin Peterson. Now, apart from uh, loving chamber music, she's also uh, counting down the days to her new EP. It's releasing this year. It's an incredible project, and we are so excited about it. I just want to ask you, though, this dress you're wearing is absolutely incredible. I believe there's more to it than just its incredible looks. What's going on here? Well, um, AIR, the local fashion yeah. design team, um, they designed these dresses that we're wearing and they will be dressing the women faculty of the Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival. Ah, yeah. stunning. That's why they look even more glamorous than ever. Mm -hmm. So right now we're going to hear something, an exclusive performance for us from Zanzi. This is Karen Peterson's very own song. It's in line with her EP that's releasing soon and it's called How Can You Love? The stage is yours. Take it away. Waking me up in the morning and put a smile on my face. It's your grace, your, your, your grace. Giving me strength every day to finish running this race. With my head up to the skies and your peace guarding my mind. Anything is possible if I just try, if I just try. How can you love someone like me, fail you every day, still you keep holding my head and leading the way? Never I run, oh Lord, you stay. Glory, oh God, that keeps me sane in moments of doubt. Guilt and shame Wherever I go Whatever I say Your love carries me With my head up to the skies And your peace guarding my mind Anything is possible If I just try If I just try How can you love someone like me Fail you every day still you keep Holding my hand and leading the way Never I run, oh Lord, you stay to glory, oh God, that keeps me sane In moments of doubt, guilt and shame Wherever I go, 
Welcome back. It's your feel-good breakfast show, the middle of the week, but giving you every reason to celebrate it. And right now, we're heading into the kitchen and uh, carrying on with a conversation that we actually had earlier this week. And we learned more about RBSD, hormone-free milk, and why Woolworths only sells locally produced milk that is RBSD hormone-free. We celebrated that, and we're going to carry on right now celebrating, because today we are carrying on with this conversation. And we have Renee Grunewald. She's a Cape wine master and cheese expert from Woolworths. Yes, indeed. The big guns are here. And she's going to be helping us understand the importance of organic and sustainable farming, and as well as how farming in harmony with nature can increase the flavor delivery in natural products. I absolutely love this conversation. Let's say good morning to Rene. How are you doing? Good morning, Rao. Are you Lovely good? to be here. Yeah, man, this is awesome. This is exciting for me because I love what Woolworths are doing when it comes to their produce. It's all about quality. It's all about working with nature, which I absolutely love. Why is that so important to you guys? Well, Rao, you said it. It's, it's the flavor. Yeah. If you compare our product, organic product, with any any other product, you'll taste that ours is more complex, it's got a layering, it's because our, our cows graze and it changes, their diets change. So you'll find that as, it's change, as the seasons change, the, the flavors vary. Oh wow, that's impressive actually. So it's like a seasonal taste, the seasonal flavor profile that almost comes through in a weird way. But more importantly for me, what does it look like when we're talking about organic farming, when you talk about these sustainable practices, what exactly does it actually look like? It's a system. If, if we're in, in an organic world and you look at a dairy to make a successful dairy, yeah. you need animals that's happy and healthy and that's yes. got space. Yes, and, please. <laughs> and you need feed to feed them. So yeah. organic is all about organic feed for the animals, making sure that they get enough grazing. If you think of South Africa, the location is very important. Yeah. So we call it the milk belt. So if you think KZN... Uh, Eastern Cape, Southern Cape, your location, so not to irrigate. And then secondly, you can't use any synthetic input. So now you have to farm your pastures and treat your animals. Yeah. And you can't use pesticides. You can't use your herbicides. You can't use routine um, antibiotics or hormones. So <laughs> then you start to think more regenerative. Yes. So what, what do I already produce that I can recycle on a farm? and give back to my animals. So it helps, it, it, it definitely makes it more resilient it um, in, a, in a farming system. And it makes me happy. Let's be honest, me as a consumer, this makes me happy. It's giving me that potential sort of guilt-free indulgence option. It's giving me that chance to really dive in and enjoy this without worrying about much and knowing that the quality is there. But let's talk about this. What are these options that you have when it comes to this organic range? Because I've got a little dance inside of me that wants to celebrate, but let's get into it. What do you have for us exactly? What's going on? So here? we've got a beautiful cottage cheese range. Yeah. You, you get smooth and you get chunky. Okay. Um, it was a very long journey to get here. So first of all, we had to build our herd. We had to make sure that we've got over 700 cows to, wow. to give it consistently because we don't want to launch a product and then run into supply issues. Yes. <laughs> it is also a tricky product because now you end up with a raw material that changes a yeah. lot. So yeah. our supplier has been producing this for 20 years and they said, oh my goodness, it changes every week. It takes so long. So it's a much slower, more more gentle approach when, when we make these I products. Like that. But that makes me think of quality always. So I like the fact that you're going down that road. Nice. Well, everything, everything we do is to ensure that we've, we've got the best quality yeah. and, and to get it consistent, so, so to figure it out. Um, cottage cheese is actually American-based product. So okay. All right. In, in the South African context, ours is more mild and it's softer in, in, in texture. And that soft texture makes it very versatile. Yes. So we can talk through what, what we can use it for. Can we, but can we try to walk and talk? Because this is too, too tempting for me right now. And the fact that I've used this for myself, for my body, when it comes to the entire range, there's, for me, I have my own sort of like preferences, right? I especially when I'm looking at cutting, getting a good diet, getting my protein in, I love the fact that you have a low fat option. So the one thing that I'm always aware of is that that taste is quite important to me. So I'm dying to taste this one especially because this I want to see, does it good. have the taste profile <laughs> that I'm looking for? Can we dig in? Please. All right, let's do this. So we've got a lovely setup over here. This is nice, quick and easy. And uh, go I've got these specialists serving want me, me to, here. To to serve you. Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get in. Whoa, okay, I need to say something important about this. And this is really positive because you think something is fat free, that it's gonna be bland, that it's not gonna have that sort of like that, that texture. 
but there's a weird creaminess to this. I don't know if I can say creamy with something that's fat-free, but it definitely has that. I never used to experience this back in the day when I used to have fat-free cottage cheese, so maybe I was doing it all wrong back then. This is amazing. And that's how we want customers to see cottage cheese. You can replace every recipe that calls for cream or cream cheese yeah. when you want creaminess without that fattiness. Mm. You can without make salad dressings. Pulse, yeah. Exactly. Let's talk about the rest of it, because this is crazy to me. Let's talk about maybe the polarity of that, because I would imagine something that's full cream normally has that perception that it's going to be overpowering, overwhelming, it might be too rich. Thanks. Is that the case here? Taste it. <laughs> Let's find out. All right. Have you already prepared this one? That's it. Thank you very much. I'm going to actually finish this because we're so good, but I'm going to keep that for later. But let's get into <laughs> this one. <laughs> well done. Okay. The perfect balance. That's the word I'm going to go with balance here. It's not overpowering, it's not too rich. I can see this being a perfect replacement for so many things. And I'm getting excited of the ideas of how we can make this something exceptional that we can cook with too. So I believe we're going to be doing that in, the, in, in days to come. So Rene, I just want to say thank you for coming through, for serving us, for giving us a reason to get excited in the kitchen, and for doing the incredible work that you are to ensure that the quality box is ticked on this. What, what's very important to remember with cottage cheese, it's super high in proteins. It's yes. got that protein, that slow-releasing protein casein, so it will keep you fuller for longer. It will make sure your blood sugar levels are stabilized. And then the very topical selenium. So very good for fighting infections, very good for cell reproduction. And it's selenium is linked to the amount that's in the soil. And again, if you use pesticides, you might not end up having selenium. So again, it goes back to not adding anything and then working and, and getting your ecosystem. I'm clapping, oh, I'm balance. celebrating. Thank you so much, Rene. And that is the difference right there. That's the Woolworths difference. It's quality produce made with the planet and its people and its animals in mind. So you and Zanzi can do your part and shop your dairy products at Woolworths. It's in store online and on the app. And while you do that, celebrate all the good times that we are doing for the earth. Nice job, Rene. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you, <laughs> Oh, this is good. Mm. Only RBSP Hormone Free. Tested and audited so you know what's in your milk. Only local, never imported. The only milk to choose. Only 91 Rand 99 per pack. Well, today is all about those winter warmer desserts on the culinary hotline, but we also asked you this morning on social media to share with us what's your favorite warm dessert for a cold winter's day. Earlier with Chef Maynard, we made this delicious rooibos milk tart. I'm now adding this as my favorite. I mean, look at that. It is delicious. But let's quickly get into the comments that you had to share. Shireen says, good morning, my Expresso family. Happy Wednesday. My favorite is the classic sago pudding, also warm custard. My belated grandmother used to make it for us growing up. And up till today, it's still my favorite. Have a super day. Thank you for that, Shireen. We have Caroline saying, good morning. Um, most definitely sago pudding. So yummy. Okay, so we've got two votes for sago pudding for winter warmers. Joan says, good morning, everyone. Bread and butter pudding with warm custard. Ooh, yes. We have Pity saying malfa pudding with custard. Yes, Pity, I am with you on that with the malfa pudding. But why don't you share your favorite winter warmers uh, for a cold winter's day when it comes to those desserts? We want to hear from you. And if you want to send us a voice note, our number is 63 8863 Bonjour. Get ready for a French adventure of a lifetime by any Clover product and enter for the opportunity to witness the exhilarating clash between South Africa and Scotland in France. Get in your zone, you Get need to be here for this. <laughs> Plus five fortunate winners and their very fortunate partners will embark on a luxurious cruise to the paradise of Ibiza. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be special, but um, we know that for tourists, going to, to France can be a little bit tricky because there are certain um, very charming cultures and traditions <laughs> that the French hold very dear to them. Um, so we figured if we're gonna send you off to France to go and 
explore Marseille or Paris, we better give you a few do's and don'ts when you enter France, just to prevent you from being thrown out of a restaurant by an angry <laughs> chef or waiter, uh, pretty much. So uh, we've got some great do's and don'ts here, and hopefully this will guide you through your journey, because you, you don't want it to end in sticky madness and have Melva pulling all over your face. No. No. And, I, and I've heard horror stories, so <laughs> let's take them through a blow by blow. Yeah, okay, I'll start it off first up. Uh, so we've got some do's and don'ts. First on the list is you do want to do the following. Okay. You do want to greet with a polite bonjour, bonjour, which in France, and it is one entering a shop, a restaurant, or any other establishment. And uh, skipping this greeting is also considered to be impolite. So make sure that you add this to the arsenal. Mm. I would say make eye contact. I would, yes. just, uh, I, would, I would add make eye contact with everything that we say today. I just have a feeling it's going to help. So when yeah. it comes to the greeting, that's the do. Don't forget to also then say goodbye when you're leaving. Okay. And you can say this by au revoir, au revoir. or salut. Oh. Salute. Salute, huh? Salute sounds a bit more goodbye hard. Goodbye and goodbye. Au revoir. Au revoir. Bye. Salute. I love that. <laughs> so right. now, kissing on the cheek, I know that's a quite a big phrase. Yes, it is. it is. What are the do's and don'ts for that? I know for the do's, right? So when you do do the following, you do want to lean in for the cheek kisses okay. when greeting friends, family, or acquaintances. All right, so make sure you just present the lean. It is customary, so it, it's okay to do so. All right? Yeah. If you don't know the person, you're not in a relationship <laughs> with the person, okay? If, if it's a random stranger. For the first time, <laughs> Don't lean in for the kiss. <laughs> I'm thinking of Hitch here, where it's the 3070. Yeah. I don't know, there will be headbutts, there won't be headbutts. Just be careful, okay? If you don't know the person, unless they lean in, which is tricky as it is, now you've got to be discerning, are they leaning, or is it just a windy day? Are they coming in? Are they? Um, just, I would, if you don't know the person, don't lean in for a kiss. Don't That's lean in. Don't lean in. <laughs> well, listen, when it comes to ordering food from restaurants, these are your Ooh. couple of do's and don'ts. So do ask the server for recommendations if you have, um, especially if you have a specific dietary preference or okay. some dietary restrictions and they will be able to suggest alternatives within their menu to yeah. you but don't request <laughs> substitutions or modifications to the dishes i know as south africans we love to if you're ordering a pizza to swap out the bacon for chicken like, five things yeah <laughs> the, the french well, love their food they've created it in that way respect it uh, but of course uh, understandably if you've got allergies in that you set for them up for, just order a pizza in France, you'll probably get thrown out of the restaurant. So let's just let's I just hold it right there. I want South Africa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and on this note, this is a very tricky thing because I believe South Africa is so different to other places. Oh, Especially when it comes so. to the bull, right? That's, Do you know anything about that? Yeah, but so obviously the polite way, the do yeah. in France, is to just gesture a little writing. And you know, especially if you're gonna be actually paying the bull, you okay? Oh, you're just, the just the William. Just a little, yeah. Okay, all right. All right. Okay, you don't, okay, whistle, clap. Okay. Cool. Yes, yo, yo, yo. Um, uh, none of that. Certainly not a wolf okay, whistle. That will okay. be taken very badly. Okay, and thank you. Uh, it is actually <laughs> impolite in any country. I was okay. about to say. Um, not that. just in France. So oh. just watch yourself, but just be careful how you jest or how flamboyant you become. Yeah, and these <laughs> gestures can mean so many things, right? I mean, especially when we're talking about like food on your plate too and your leftovers. Uh, Something you definitely want to do is finish the meal in the restaurant, right? So I know South Africans absolutely love this thing called the doggy bag. Mm. Everyone knows about the doggy bag, I'll finish it at home. <laughs> but try not do this, insist on taking leftovers with you. Don't do this, it may be seen as disrespectful to the chef sure. and the dining experience. And I can see why, it's like, did you not like it? Why don't you, why don't you want to yeah. eat it? Yeah. Makes sense. I feel like we have a lot of do's and don'ts yeah, around food, because the French are foodies. <laughs> now, yeah, another sure. thing is, you know, some people always love asking for tomato sauce. I'm guilty mm -hmm. of that. So if you're <laughs> heading to France, do take your time with the meal. Savor every bite. You know, enjoy the meal and experience each course. Don't ask for tomato sauce when <laughs> dining in France. It is not commonly used in their food and French cuisine. So for them, especially the chef, it will be insulting. And I would say when you're asking for those recommendations, maybe don't ask if there's a meal that comes with tomato sauce or tastes like tomato sauce or anything <laughs> like that. Um, I, hopefully we haven't made you terrified about what will undoubtedly be an unforgettable cultural oh, yeah. experience. When you get to taste the food, you will understand why there is so much culture and tradition around it. Yeah, and on top of that, this is even more exciting because you stand the chance to win an incredible rugby experience. Ooh. Simply buy and do the following. Buy any Clover product and keep your till slip handy. Then you want to do the following. Dial okay. star 120 star 560 hash and follow the prompts. Literally, it's that simple. Come on. And then keep watching Expresso Daily to find out more. There are T's and C's that can be found on clover.co.za. Au revoir. <laughs> Salut. <laughs>
Welcome back. Go and grab your cup of coffee because that's what we're about this morning. We've been looking forward to this moment so much. Jacobs have launched their brand new Instant Origins range with um, a little taste of Southeast Asia and Latin America. These incredible blends. And I promised we are going to get to taste them and give an honest adjudication of what is our favorite. Uh, Matt, thank you so much for sticking around, my friend. 100%. Um, we're going to have a little bit of fun now. We yep. I don't want to say we're coffee snobs, because we are really not, because we, we understand there is a time and a place. And you've educated me today on kind of breaking, pushing the boat out a little bit for the mm. time of the day. You can appreciate, I can appreciate coffee three times a day in different ways. And I love that. So now we've got two streams here that are very different. So let's start possibly with our taste of Latin America. Latin America. Oh, nice. 100%. Well, do you want to... I'll have a go. Grab um, that. So Would you like um, some? Uh, I'm gonna milk? add a little dash of Just milk. A little dash of milk. Oh, I, I don't know what it is. Black coffee and myself. I, I'm it's actually going to It's, it's, it's completely up to you. And I would uh, normally have the gold perfect. with milk, so I'm going to use that as my, my yardstick. So, so I'm going to follow suit, and I'm so going to have a little bit of milk with mine as well. Are we expecting to taste anything here? Should we be looking out for anything? This or should is, we just this is see quite fruity. This is quite yeah. mild, um, quite well balanced. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's like your, your Jacob's Gold. If you're a Jacob's Gold drinker, I think okay. you'll, you'll really enjoy this. I'm uh, a Jacob's Gold drinker. This is good. I don't know if it's the coffee or just my hips, but I'm definitely feeling Latin America right now. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. I like yeah, it. It's, it's not the coffee, man. Um, no, that is lovely. The fruitiness is what sings mm. through for me. Mm. That's beautiful. I don't, I, I don't actually get that often in my coffee experience, so clearly I need to uh, elevate myself here because that's something important for me. I like flavor, and I like mm. that balance. I don't like that sort of... Uh, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like that that musky cigar, like man, you okay. taste you get in coffee sometimes. I love this so much. It's That's got a great. great balance, that fruity note on it. Uh, it? So much planning and care has gone into the preparation process, and I have a feeling that you might potentially ruin it at number 99. And I've heard something <laughs> about pouring in boiling or too hot water. Yep. Does, can that affect the quality of the taste? No, it certainly can. Um, you know, so uh, a lot of people put in like super hot boiling water. Mm. A lot of kettles boil their water like crazy. Yeah, like oh. the sun. Um, yeah. And uh, and what what can happen is that you can end up burning the the coffee granules um, oh. right at, right at the end uh, as you're preparing it. So that can ruin the the taste um, quite a bit. So a good rule of thumb is to sort of get at the kettle sort of boiling just to where the bubbles are starting. Just starting to bubble and then, like that, and, okay. then, uh, and then sort of uh, close it off. Um, because most kettles don't come with a, with a thermometer, unfortunately. <laughs> the <laughs> ideal temperature is around 95 degrees, but, um, but yeah, that's a good rule of thumb. Wow. Oh, I love that. You're going to change the game for a lot of people. Okay, yeah. let's move on yes. to a little Southeast Asia. What are we expecting from this flavor? Product? So this is more, more bold, strong, intense, like your crooning packs a bit more of a punch. Um, sorry, yeah, I'm... Uh, I thought you were going to take it for yourself. No, I was. I wanted to. <laughs> no, guys, sorry, I'm, I'm jealous of you guys. The worst all this host ever. No, no, not even good. providing you but, with uh, a cup. Would you like some I would love a little, a little, little dash of no, milk. Thank you. So is this is more of a stronger coffee? Hundred percent. Yeah. So this packs a little bit more of a of a punch, and uh, so I see you adding some some sugar. Exactly. A little so just to sugar. just to take that bitterness maybe away, um, and that's uh, and that's absolutely fine. I mean, however you love your coffee is. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I'll start playing around with this because it's not so much. The, ooh, before ooh, I great. literally started a fire in this kitchen <laughs> with this flavor profile, but there's something quite nice about the stronger flavors that maybe balance out a creamy. I would even put a drop of cream in here or ooh. full cream milk or something because that strong kind of coffee flavor there could balance out. That's beautiful. I mean, I'm yeah. always scared of strong coffee, but this is full bodied. It is a good, mm. good roast. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Is so it weird to say and correlate velvety with this? I don't know why it's like a. It's got this like an oh, oily and like smooth to it. Like a Smooth, yeah. that's the word, yeah. Smooth. Is that normal? Is that right? No, so 100%. So a, a darker roast coffee, which this is, will be a little bit more oily. Um, okay. And, and that's, that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. It's, uh, it, it, it brings that, that, that yeah, strong flavor through. Mm. That's how you've <laughs> yeah, yeah. more yeah. of that flavor. Oh, 100%. Nice. Oh, beautiful. Raul, I hope you've woken up the grey matter enough yeah, to go gents, and cover Yeah, gents, I'm the ready to serve affairs. once again. Let me go do my official duties. Thank you very much, brother. I'll, I'll Thanks, take guys. this with me. Thank you. It, it's very busy absorbing news from across the world yeah. without even knowing I about thought it. I was going to enjoy that one more only because I go for Jacob's Gold, oh, but yeah. I'm really enjoying this one That's between the two. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, encourage you to experiment with them and, uh, and give them a go.
We need to bring the gold and the crooning in as well so we can actually do the full taste test to get the nuance because the difference in flavor profile is astounding. When you talk about full body, well-rounded, they have nailed it. That Southeast Asia, absolutely gorgeous. And this Latin America, I think, is going to win a lot of hearts. So fruity, such a delicious flavor profile. You guys have nailed it. <laughs> well, Thanks. well done. Now, what is your favorite? Mm. Want to go? Introducing New Jacob's Origins. For those who recognize the authentic taste and aroma from Latin America and Southeast Asia. Magical Jacob's Aroma. Oh, yes, and it's a minute past eight and it's time to commence with official duties one last time this morning and starting with national news headlines. Now, the Civil Society Forum of the SA National AIDS Council has called for youth-friendly health services during a march in Durban. Now, this was in the run-up to the SA AIDS Conference, which has started in Durban. Now, Forum spokesperson Nelson Dlamini says that most new infections are among girls and young women aged between 15 and 24 years old. Now, Dlamini says the highest rate is in KwaZulu-Natal, where more than 1,300 new HIV infections in this age, gr age group occur weekly. Now, young people from disadvantaged communities are hit the hardest. While sticking to national news headlines, the Chwane Metro Police Department, otherwise known as TMPD, says more than 50 of its officers will be dismissed in the next two months due to corruption. Now, Johannesburg Metro Police say six officers have already been shown the door in this financial year. And the chiefs of the three Metro Police Departments of Chwane, Johannesburg and Ekuruleni in Gauteng appear before the Standing Committee on Community Safety in the Gauteng Legislature to give account of their individual crime fighting and bylaw enforcement operations for the period January to March this year. Well, from our national news headlines, let's head over to international news. And the United Nations World Food Program, the WFP, hopes to resume food aid distribution to Ethiopia by July after it was halted earlier this month. Now, this was in response to widespread theft as Ethiopians battled to cope with ongoing drought and a civil war in the Tigray region, which has been ranging for two years. Now, more than 20 million Ethiopians are in need of humanitarian assistance and UN food aid to the northern Tigray region was paused in May and then to all of the Ethiopia this month in response to the widespread theft. Well, carrying on with the international headlines, the U.S. Coast Guard is using all possible resources in its search for the tourist submarine which is missing off the southeastern Canadian coast. Now, there are five people in the submarine, two crew and three tourists, which undertakes expeditions to view the wreck of the Titanic. Now, it sank in 1912 and is lying at a depth of 3,800 meters. And British billionaire Hamish Harding and a Pakistani businessman Shahzada Dawood and his son Suleiman are the three tourists on the submarine. Now, they paid $250,000 each for their eight-day expedition. Well, we're wishing them nothing but the best of luck in uh, that rescue mission. For now, though, our final headline is this. If you're visiting the Garden Province this week, you want to head for Durban's Bluff, where the Sodurba Tourism Organization will be hosting its sixth annual welcoming of the Wales Festival. Now, it's taking place from Friday to Sunday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Old Whaling Station on the Bluff, which is, of course, also a World Whale Heritage Site. Now, there will be educational programs for children, an arts and crafts market, food stalls, and beach games. And the old whaling station on Durban's Bluff was one of the largest whaling stations in the Southern Hemisphere and was used from 1907 to 1975. Well, that's all the latest uh, headlines I have for you when it comes to news, but we're going to dive straight into the sport one last time, and G's got all the latest. Thank you so much, Raul. Let's start with rugby, and I'm going to take it as good news. Sir Khaleesi says he is confident that he'll be ready for the World Cup as he continues his recovery from a knee injury in the Springbok camp in Pretoria. So Khaleesi has now stepped up his recovery during the Pretoria-based Springbok camp, where a squad of 41 has assembled to prepare for firstly the Rugby Championship and then the all-important World Cup. Now, you might remember in 2019, Khaleesi was in a similar race against time to get fit at the same camp in the same city. And, of course, he recovered to lead the Springboks to their World Cup victory in Japan. I'm going to take this all as a very good sign. 
line. Now we turn to football and Mamelodi Sundowns have now confirmed the announcement of a four-year contract extension for coach Rulani Mokwena. I think the writing was on the wall. Mokwena began his um, law, began last season, in fact, as a co-coach along with Mankoba Mbiti and Steve Kompela. And then a coaching reshuffle in October last year saw him become the sole head coach and he embraced it, leading Downs to their sixth straight league title. The Brazilians at 71 points, in fact, left them just one point short of their own record of 72 for the 16-team PSL set in 2015 and 2016. Mokwena also steered Sundowns to the semi-finals of the CAF Champions League, exiting Aragon, um, agonizingly close on away goals to Vidata Athletic of Morocco. Now, another milestone in football, and it's going to be a difficult one to emulate. Cristiano Ronaldo became the first ever men's player to reach 200 international caps. That was when he led Portugal in their Euro 2024 qualifier against Iceland. The skipper marked the occasion by netting an 89th minute winner, as he is accustomed to doing, and it was in fact his 123rd goal for his country. As a tribute to his historic accomplishment, Ronaldo was presented with an official certificate as a complimentary record holder by Guinness World Records. Probably one of the few things he doesn't have already. And additionally, he received a beautiful Portugal shirt adorned with the number 200 printed prominently on the back, symbolizing his record-breaking caps. Now, if you want to know who holds the overall record, that belongs to Christine Lilly, who has just some 354 international caps under her belt. Going to be a tough one to beat there as well. Now, talking of tough one to beat, let's turn to the Battle Royale playing out in the ashes. So Australia's captain, Pat Cummings, has had a few moments um, of impact. He sealed a remarkable two-wicket victory uh, for his side over England in a thrilling climax to what's been a gripping five-day battle in that opening ashes test at Edgebaston. The visitors, uh, they set, uh, were set a 281 victory target. They began a rain-delayed day on 107 for three, but their chances looked remote when they were reduced to 227 for eight. But step in Cummings in partnership with Nathan Lyon, both bowlers, bear in mind, they launched an incredible fight back and sealed the victory he did with an unbeaten 44. And then Osman Khawaja was named player of the match after that 141 in the first innings and a vital 65 in the second. And that's where we leave our sporting headlines for today. The road's now proper up and running. Let's get the latest on the traffic front and see where the weather's at. Thank you, Graham. Well, let's start off with your traffic in Johannesburg in Diepkloof. Due to a multi-vehicle accident on the N3 northbound at the Galulis Interchange, there are heavy delays. Please add some extra travel time to your journey this morning. In Edenvale, there's also been another multi-vehicle accident. It's on the R24 westbound at the Electron Interchange. The right lane is closed and traffic is slow moving. Well, that's your traffic for this morning. Let's take a final look at your weather. And we have some joyous news to share. Dams supplying the Western Cape have reached the 90% mark. This follows heavy rainfall over the province in the last few days. Water and Sanitation Department spokesperson Vasani Mavasa says the welcome rains have left many communities devastated. Mavasa says two people have lost their lives as a result of the flooding brought on by torrential rain. To quote Mavasa, he says it's the first time that the system has reached this capacity in the past nine years. We would like as a department to call on members of the public to be cautious in the heavy rain. None of our infrastructure in the province has shown any damage, but we are continuing audits on structures as the rainfall continues. The Berg, Steenbras Upper and Steenbras Lower Dams stand at 100%. Wemershoek Dam is on 99% and Tierwaterskloof is almost at 97% full. Well, that's your news update. Let's take a look at your temperatures. In Pulakwane, your low is 6, your high 22. Mbumbela, 11, 24. Pretoria, 7 with a high of 20. A sunny day in Johannesburg, 5's your low, 19, your high. Mahiking, 2, 23. Klerstorp, 0, 21. If you're in Kimberley, minus 1 with a high of 17 can be expected. Bloemfontein, minus 3 with a high of 17. Richards Bay, 14, 24. Peter Maritzburg, 6, 22. If you're in Durban, a low of 14, a high of 22 can be expected. Mtata, a 6 with a high of 20. East London, 9 with a high of 19. 
If you're in Craddock, falls your low, 17 your high. Kabecha, a rainy day with a low of 6, a high of 18. George, 7 with a high of 15 and some rain. Cloudy conditions for Cape Town, 9 with a high of 14. Worcester, 7, 14. Sutherland, 5, 14. And Uppington, your low for today is 3 and your high 22 degrees Celsius. Well, those are your temperatures for today. But before we say goodbye, let's take a final look at your sunrise views. Naomi is kicking us off for our 8 a.m. update. Captured this beautiful rainbow over Mossel Bay. We have Anissa from Umschlanga who shared this sunrise over the ocean. Absolutely stunning. Heading over to the Eastern Cape, Mornay is taking a stroll along the beach in Kabecha and send this spectacular view. Look at all those pinks in the sky. And Louise from Alberton in, is outside in her garden and decided to share that view with us. So thank you for those sunrise views. And there you go. If you would love to share your good morning view with us, we would love to see it. Our number is 063-408-8863. Yeah, thank you so much, Zoe. And yes, you, Mzanzi, keep those videos and everything else coming. We're going to dive into a conversation that's trending online with regards to the weather in the Western Cape right now. So if you have any videos, bring it through, come share it, because we're going to share everything we found online. We'll see you there. Hey, what's that? This is Octifex, a new accessible platform to trade Forex on global markets. Cool. What's the forex? It's short for foreign exchange, trading currencies. Buy low, sell high. Score points, right? Exactly. What's leverage? It's like you got cool friends. They vouch for you and you can trade it big. Precisely. So basically it's an app where you learn and trade and it's safe and it looks good. That about sums it up here. Octifex. Trading made clear. It's my feel-good Welcome back to the culinary heartland bling! Ching, ching, ching! Ah, uh, we gave an extra chutzpah today. Why? Because our chef has given the most. Chef Maynard has been amazing. And he's got one more recipe to share with us. And it just goes oh too well with winter. We have been making some beautiful winter warmers. How does this sound? A chai latte with white chocolate and coconut marshmallows. Oh, buddy, can I say, first of all, thank you yes. for 
making it accessible for us to yeah. touch your brilliance yeah. and get a little bit of that, but do it in our own kitchen. Exactly. Thank you so yeah, much. yeah, yeah. And all these ingredients are readily available and they're everywhere, and it's so easy actually to prepare. It's just That's about right. how you put it all together. Okay, so I'm exactly. here to help you. So we're going to make a chai start? latte. So you can start up the heat over there for okay. us in the middle. Cool. I think it is this there one. Go. There we go. Yeah. So we are going to start off by toasting our spices. Are we going to start with cinnamon? Okay. You can put that in the pan, and it's going to be a dry, a dry, dry roast. roast. Yeah. Why, why do we do this? Why do we roast? Just, our... just to release all the oils and the and the, and the flavor from the from from the from the dry spices. Yeah. I mean, you can put about ten peppercorns. Yeah. The, uh, it adds a beautiful uh, zesty mm. uh, flavor. Over there, we've got some cardamom pods, oh, wow. which I love. Cardamom is what gives chai latte that uh, distinctive, distinctive sure. flavor. That's kind of um, yes, yes, the yes. headiness. Yeah. The headiness. And then we've got some cloves in there as well. So you can shake that around. Okay. And we just a dry toast. You just, you, yeah. I suppose, because they all have innate oils that are going to exactly. react to the exactly. heat. Exactly, yeah, yeah, you can just put it. So we've got some, uh, we've got about four cups of water in here. Okay. And then uh, I've just opened up some tea bags uh, just to get all the flavor out of it, about four or five tea bags in there. Are we still using our rooibos tea? Yes, um, rooibos tea, all the way. And then beautiful. you can add some freshly chopped ginger. Oh, nice. You can add that in there. Um, are we adding this yes, to our, we our wet? Add, uh, that's been cooking for a while, but we're just going to be adding, you want to cook that for at least 10 minutes. It's just to get all that beautiful Let ginger, it really ginger flavor okay. out of there. I'm just going to... On the joy of, of creating... Well, I think anything that we've created today, your house is going to be permeated with these smells. We talk about that heady yes, experience of yes, food like yes, this. Exactly. Imagine when your guests walk in. First of all, they <laughs> smell this. Exactly. But when yeah. they sit down, you present them first with their latte. But when you sit down, can you imagine that as a showstopper at yeah, the end of the meal? And yeah, this is a yeah. home chef accessible exactly meal, but this man. can also work really well as a dessert mm. if you do not want to have a big heavy dessert oh, okay cool top, so yeah. i think these are yeah you can smell there. the the smells are Ooh, quite coming wow. out okay cool so that we're going to add that in just there amazing, and we're just going to let that cook for another while this has now been cooking for a while and we've got some and we've got some prepared ones over here so you can just strain it Okay. Into there for us. Just put it here on the side so you don't burn. There we go. Sure. What is the key? Because this is a very, everything in here has an incredibly strong flavor profile, scent. It, yes, but it, together they just make up this, this beautiful whole. Is there, and, is there uh, a way that you approach making this or combining this many strong scents and flavors? Yeah, I mean, the, this is, this is, a, this is a, uh, I mean, the, the, the mixture of these spices are uh, all over Middle East and cooking everywhere. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, just a, it's just a beautiful combination. Have a little bit of fun. That is yeah. exquisite. And it's yeah, not yeah, overpowering. Yeah. It's not overpowering. It's not overpowering. And now you can stir in, we've got about half a cup of brown sugar that you yeah. can whisk in there. All right. I'll grab you can that. just move over here. Then I'm going to fetch our places. milk. Great. Uh, we've got some milk boiling over here, which is also going to form part of our uh, dish. And then uh, I'm just going to gently sort of froth this. All the sugar going in, eh? Yes, yes, yes. And it's so easy to froth milk at home. Yeah. If you if you look at that. Oh wow! So this is about uh, three cups of milk that we've cooked. And uh, yeah, there we can see the. Uh, how long do you need to to heat it through? No, it just needs to be. It doesn't need to be boiling, boiling hot. You just need to yeah. It just needs to be, just 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 under boiling temperature or cooking temperature. Oh, I, I wish there you could smell this through your screen. You have there. no idea. It just conjures memories and emotion. It's amazing yeah, how that exactly. taps into the old factory exactly. center. Oh. This is wonderful winter. It's comforting. Um, oh. And it's not so expensive to make, and you can make it for a crowd. I mean, you can. Yeah. So I'm just going to gently sort of hold back the um, the froth over there, and we're just going to add. Oopsie. Okay. Uh, say. Oh wow. Okay, I'm just going to keep some. How, how do you kind of know you got it right? Is there a color that you're looking yes, for? Yes, yes, yes. Exactly the color. The color is right, and then obviously you're going to taste as well. So then you can decide how much uh, do you actually want. Put in. Kind of so now we can cool. decant this. I hope I'm not going to make a big mess. <laughs> it's all right. But there we go. We're going to decant that. It's in a working there. kitchen, my friend. Exactly. It's a working exactly, kitchen. Exactly, exactly. I've 
Got a towel here. Let's just wipe that off. Okay, cool. And now we're going to garnish our glasses oh. that we're going to serve it in. We've oh, got some... That's where the white chocolate comes ah, in. Ah, we've Brilliant. got some white chocolate. So we've been adding white chocolate, rooibos tea, and milk to all our dishes this morning. And, uh, yeah, we're sort of just going to... And I, I think that's quite a cool way of approaching things. If you're going to set a meal up for a special occasion. Think of a theme, think of yeah. something that, a common thread that you can lead through to add to that experience. Um, there is so much you can do as a home chef, and I know we're blessed on the show to have like three, four generations worth of chefs yes. watching, which is amazing, and I learned so much from them, but it's these little tiny tips and tricks that can just elevate. Yeah, exactly, and that's that's nice. So, yeah, the white chocolate is just going to be lovely because you're going to drink it, oh, you get and then it's sort of going to have, uh, that's going to be the first sort of thing Ooh. that you're going to taste in your mouth, very decadent. And that's quite nice and sweet, and then it gets tempered by the, um, exactly. the flavor exactly. combination, exactly. the spice in the tea. Yeah, wow. we've got these um, these double walled uh, glass oh, mugs so which I think it. is going to yeah. be excellent for this. So we've got some decorations over here. You can go crazy over here now. You can start sort of putting little balls and hundreds and thousands and all kinds of little heart shaped things. These are also great for kids to do. Yeah, for So if you sure. want to get your kids into the kitchen. So this absolutely. is a nice way Look of... Look at uh, it. Oh, and you get to yeah. lick the chocolate afterwards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can, if a little spills into the tea, yeah, that's it's, it's not, the, not end the end of, of the, the world. world. I can see my son is going to absolutely... I'm going to have to make a version of this for, yeah, for him. Oh, how cute is that? Yeah. All right, so very quickly, in the 30 seconds that we have okay, left, cool. how do we So now wrap this we puppy are going to pour in our tea. <laughs> oh, that's... Ex there we Where go. Where is it? Oh, miss. That's all right. Look at that. Oh, my okay, goodness. Cool. You can pass us the... Ooh, you, know. <laughs> you can pass us the froth milk over there. Ooh. So, okay. let's just clean this up a little bit. Oh, this is exquisite. Okay. We are going to lay the finishing touches here and put the froth on our beautiful... Yes, yes, you can spoon side. that on there if you want. Um, absolutely okay. perfect. Um, you can find this recipe and any of our recipes today, these exquisite winter warmers, heroing this beautiful Roy was um, using milk in ingenious ways on expressoshow.com. Um, I've got to say to Chef Maynard, you've been absolutely amazing, buddy. You're, you're welcome, you're welcome. You represent the top tier, but you've opened up a door for all of us to enter <laughs> into the kitchen in such an incredible way. We love you, my friend, and I cannot wait you're to welcome, taste. You're welcome, you're welcome. Here we go. Yay. Yay. Can I It's my feel-good breakfast show. 
Yes, so Zanzi, welcome back. You feel good breakfast show and ooh, you feel that, bro? Not anymore man, after Chef Maynard's, uh, my first <laughs> taste of Chef Maynard's food, it's it absolutely it's insane, insane, but eh? it's crazy outside. Yeah, but look, outside it is crazy. We're lucky to have all the warmth inside, but oh, so much has been affected by the weather that we've been experiencing. And of course, it has taken social media by storm as yeah. well. And excuse the pun on that, but so many people have been reporting in on what's been going down. And it's been, it's been crazy, man. It really has been crazy. So thank you so much to all the citizen reporters out there. Let's start with one particular platform that's been giving great news. The Facebook page, Cape Town is awesome. Mm. It's a great page. Uh, but they gave us an update in the floods in the Citrus Dal oh. area. Um, incredible look at that scene. Another flood came through in the evening and has wiped out some of the power transmission poles, now leaving the area without electricity and internet access. That is intense. I've not gets real. seen Suddenly the when you start that, to yeah. see the assets uh, being taken out in that it's way. It's crazy. crazy, man, but it doesn't stop there. Look at this, a TikTok user by the name of Views from Lal. He actually reported from Claymont to Paul and all the way to Pinelands, showing wow. us just how this is actually affecting everyone and exactly what the extent was. And I mean, with so many people being uh, left with uh, these encouraging uh, comments that they put on this one, there's another one that said, my prayers are with all living in the Western Cape and others also sharing what they have lost as a result of these floods. And let me tell you, they've lost so much already. This is oh, insane. And it's just heartbreaking because we need the rain and this is, yeah, the, this is the, the, the torturous thing about this while too. the dams are getting fuller people are losing lives they're losing properties roads are being swept away so we move back onto TikTok now where a user the saint central shares some pretty breathtaking footage of flooding in stellenbosch just around the corner showing how the river has ridden um substantially and is now flooding the surrounding infrastructure i've seen sure. this one on my own timeline with even a new river forming my goodness wow. unbelievable stuff you can barely even see the houses the water level is so high man but it's the damage to infrastructure coming with this. that's my thing and you think about these informal settlements that are definitely getting affected by it's this man away. it is sad it is tragic and our thoughts are definitely going out to all those yeah. affected but wow, what a river being formed there. That is insane, the power <laughs> of it all. Now, it doesn't stop there. If you also sent in some images of her being stuck on Fisher Hook Road and her car was getting flooded, it is insane. Oh, my Luckily, gosh. though, she was fished out before too much damage was done, but it was definitely, <laughs> as you can see, a clearly scary experience. Wow, I'm so glad that she's okay. Look at this. <gasps> uh, you just don't take chances, please. And wow. I think some of the biggest incidences are happening when people try to cross rivers, try mm. to cross bridges mm. that are affected. Just don't even take a chance. Now, in true South African fashion, there were people who made light of the situation, possibly just to get <laughs> through it by bringing some humor. Uh, users such as Asiani and Gwen Trutter <laughs> I shared some lighter stories regarding the floods. Let's have a little look. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay, ingenuity. I even mean, saw some people, like, uh, wake skiing on some of these yeah. floods, but it's insane. Again, we're not trying to poke fun at anything right now. I think for South Africa, this is our oh, coping mechanism. This is the one we were talking yeah. about. Yeah, insane. Crazy how uh, ingenuity comes at such a crazy time, but... Honestly, genuinely speaking, from everybody in the studio here, our thoughts and condolences are going out to everybody affected right now. We hope that you can stay safe, find some uh, shelter if you can, and can outlast this crazy storm that we are currently in. At the yeah, and it sounds like, once again, Gift of the Givers are central to the yeah. emergency response efforts and working with the local government. So please, if you can, if you're a company that can support, if you've got goods, do it through that gateway. Don't enter into these areas that are flood affected. We do not need more people to try and save in those spaces. Yeah. We need resources. Clearly, resources are key. So thank you so much to the gift to the givers as well for what they're doing. Well, thank you, gents. Breakfast, it certainly awakens our taste buds and it starts our day off on a delicious note. Now, if our moms taught us anything, it is that a nourishing breakfast sets the tone for the rest of the day, fueling you with energy and giving you the right start to conquer any challenge. Now, Kuchle joined Kellogg's birthday celebrations in honor of South Africa's favorite breakfast, turning 100.
From the timeless cheer of they great to the mouth-watering crunch of taste the magic, Kellogg's has been a breakfast of champions for a century, filling our mornings with fuel and flavor. So get ready to raise your spoons as Kellogg's reaches a remarkable milestone, 100 years of hashtag nourishing great starts in South Africa. And to celebrate, celebrity chef Zanella Fansale will be guiding guests through cooking and enjoying a unique Kellogg's cereal-infused menu. We're incredibly proud to be part of South Africa's uh, breakfasts for the past 100 years. We sold in 180 countries, but for us, we're proudly South African. We source and manufacture most of our products within South Africa, and we're so proud to be part of nourishing great starts for South Africans at their breakfast time. So Kellogg's believes that the secret to getting ahead is having a great start. And if you get a great start, then you can reach your full potential through the day. And obviously breakfast is part of having that great start. So for us, uh, nourishing great starts is about um, how do we highlight that Kellogg's was the bowl that started it all. When W.K. Kellogg decided to start in South Africa, I don't think he had in mind that we would be celebrating 100 years today. And we thank South Africans for always bringing us to their table every morning. And also we are humbled because we've been nourishing you. We're humbled because you've made us part of a family. Thank you, South Africa, for loving us. We wouldn't have done this without you. And we will continue to make sure that we help nourish your grace. I am so excited because today we are literally going to be cooking with Zanele. So today we'll be making quiches and French toast. The quiche is going to be made with all French base and then we're going to mix eggs, veggies and some chicken just to give it some uh, protein and we're going to make the French toast that is crusted with cornflakes. I wanted to show that Kellogg's is versatile do anything with it, just the normal cereal. My mom was always buying us cornflakes though she was complaining with her milk, but it was always in our cabinet. So cornflakes has always been there. It's still in my cabinet, my kids are loving it. I also loved it growing up. The special wish I would like to pass on to Kellogg's is thank you so much for always being there, for being a trusted brand in South Africa. Thank you, keep on doing the good work. My highlight of the day has to be using Kellogg's Corn Flakes and All Brand Flakes to create breakfast that is beyond the usual cereal that we know. My favorite all-time memory of Kellogg's is actually sneaking into the kitchen with my siblings and snacking on the Kellogg's. Mama would wonder, I know, what happened to eat Kellogg's Corn Flakes? The Gugandi, we come alive in the nighttime. <laughs> My fondest Kellogg's memories definitely before school and after drama class, always with a bowl of cereal. Even now till this day, like just as comfort, I'll have it before I go to sleep even. My favorite Kellogg's cereal is definitely Cocoa Pops with cold milk. You're going to put the Cocoa Pops in first and then the milk, you're going to let it soak a little bit so it's a bit soft but not too soft and enjoy. My birthday wish for Kellogg's on their 100th birthday is to have a hundred more, <laughs> simply put. <laughs> Growing up, it was cornflakes, but now it definitely has to be old brand flakes. Absolutely love them, and they need to be soggy, so I warm them up, and then I leave them to sog up a bit, and then I'll add a bit more cold milk, and then enjoy them. I just wish them many more years of success and prosperities, and may they meet all their goals. My fondest Kellogg's memories date back to when I was young and growing up in my grandmother's home. So I'd always do grocery shopping with my grandmother and our absolute favorite and must haves on our grocery list was obviously Kellogg's products. And this is because she knew that that's what I enjoyed before going to school. Generations and generations have been waking up to us 
and generations and generations are feeling fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And it is our jobs to make sure that not only South Africans are fed, but they are fulfilled. 100%. But what do you think contributed to Kellogg's thriving for so many years and becoming an iconic South African brand? Each and every one of us at Kellogg have got great memories about our first experiences that we've had with Kellogg. And I know a lot of South Africans have got similar as well. Well, there you have it. Let's continue to start our days with a breakfast that puts a smile on our faces because happiness tastes delicious. All thanks to Kellogg's. Wow, a hundred years. I can't believe they've been serving us our bellies and providing us with such incredible memories. I'm here for this, and that's insane. What an incredible milestone. Oh, it really <laughs> is. A hundred years of hashtag nourishing great starts. And what better way to celebrate than by giving you the chance to win your share of <laughs> one million rand in cash. Yeah, and I'll simply do the following. Buy any two qualifying Kellogg's products and dial star 120 star 2447 hash, and then follow the prompts and enter the last four digits of your barcode. As simple as that. Now, South Africans, you stand a chance to win until the end of October. Yes, there's so much winning to be had, and your T's and C's can be found at Kellogg's.com. Good luck. <laughs> From a box full of goodness to a breakfast that keeps a nation going, here's to 100 years of nourishing great starts. Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Espresso on S3. And we are back on the couch with another trending story. Now, yesterday, it was announced that Miss SA Top 12 finalist Laverne Jose dropped out of the Miss SA competition because of bullying allegations from her childhood. Now, should she be cancelled? That's the question people are asking on social media. Did she do the right thing by bowing out? Well, we had brought a panel in to help us unpack this. Shiraz Reddy and Carissa Cupido, they are here to join us and obviously share their opinions with us. Yeah, good morning. Hi. Again, Shiraz, thanks for joining us. Anytime. How are you doing? I'm good. I love being here on a midweek. Yeah. Liquor. For some oh, skin. Exactly but this that. is something really important, I think, right now, because yeah. there's a bigger topic coming out of this. Absolutely. A bigger conversation. Firstly, I just want to understand the situation correctly. 
Was she asked to leave the pageant or did she decide on her own accord that she's gonna bow out of this? So it was a consultation process okay. um, with any thing that is so public. And I mean, the Miss SA organization, it's massive, it's global. Yeah. And I think the only way one can do it is through a deliberation. You know, yeah. you have to mitigate all the factors and you have to figure it out whether it is best for you mm. as a pageant contestant and yeah. as a business and organization that's globally recognized. And that is exactly what it was. It mm. was a discussion. They've always consulted her and her family. Um, but also it has to stem from a bit of, you need to have proof yeah. that this is what's happened. Yeah. You can't just be like, oh yeah, she bullied me once, but she accidentally elbowed me in the, you know, yeah. in the corridor. Yeah. Um, so it was definitely a conversation that was had and she decided, you know, it would be best. Okay. Yeah. This is not the first time we've had stories like this yeah. where finalists in beauty pageants have mm. had to <laughs> step away or step, you know, bow out. Yeah. Do you think she made the right decision to bow out so early in the competition? Because it was not that long ago that they announced mm. the top 12. So Ooh. it's not like the finalists have had all that time yet mm. to prepare for the show. Mm. I, yeah. Do you want to go for it? Yeah, no, I just, for me, honestly, I think that mm. it, was, it was a good decision. Mm. Um, I think that rather now than later on, yeah. um, because the bigger picture thinking is that it's going to backfire, mm -hmm. you know? Um, what if she made it to the top five? And then yeah. it, be, it takes away yeah. the beauty mm. and that regalness that is Miss South Africa, yeah. um, which is a sad case, but yeah. And I think in stepping down right now, it almost looks noble of her to have done that. Mm. And I know people did call her out to get us to this point, but she's almost taken accountability for her actions in some sort of way. Whereas at the end of it, if it was the top two, it kind of would feel reactionary. Yeah. And right now, I think this was the best decision for all of them. I mean, we also saw an example in 2020 with Bianca Shumbi, yes. how her tweets were resurfaced from when she was 14 years old and she also had to step down. So it kind of is a process that is followed by Miss South Africa mm. and by the contestants. And I think this was definitely the best move for her to do at this point. Yeah. So, so yeah. maybe I can throw a curveball here because yeah. I'm always one about believing in change, believing mm. in uh, uh, growth yeah. as a person and as an individual. Is it fair that we are after 10, 20 years judged on something so far back mm. when we've potentially made amends or we are no longer or we no longer identify as that. Let's use this example. Maybe she's not a bully anymore. Maybe yeah. she did do that in the past. We all have experienced or have been a part of that. Is it fair for her to now have to deal with that? Could she not have used this as an opportunity it's for... A fair, it's a good question. You know yeah, what I mean? Um, question. And I think that, no. I think we must learn to live and move on, forgive, and maybe not forget, but forgive in a sense and look at the person's purity and where they are at the moment, mm. yes. you know what I mean? And celebrate that because yeah. they've overcome, they've moved forward, you know? Mm. Yeah. But be sorry about it because yeah. bullying is not, a, is not a soft topic. Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. not okay anyway. But, no, <laughs> but I love how you said it's yeah. noble of her yeah. to have stepped down mm. now mm. And, and take ownership mm. of it, learn from it, and enter again next exactly. year, yeah. but mm. acknowledge, you know what, this was my past. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Actually, and make it part of your cause. Yes. To, to encourage younger girls that, you know, follow these pageants religiously. Mm. I was exactly. one of them. Mm. Yeah. And I have, to this day, my favorite Miss South Africa's, yeah. and you see a lot of contestants entering multiple times yeah. before they win. It's not exactly. always yeah. the first entrant that yeah. takes the crown. Mm. But yeah, it's gonna definitely be, she needs to make it part of her journey. Exactly, yeah. I think that's what I was saying. It's the bigger picture. Yeah. You know, um, you may not be able to walk that ramp this mm. year, but mm. use the next year to yeah. take this message mm. and use it, you know, for good. Mm. Um, and help those girls that are currently being bullied by yeah. other girls at high school or whatever it for may sure. be. Yeah. I think it is tough um, for the girls that are victims in the situation yes. to see in this present time somebody that as recently, you could say, as five years ago, perhaps, uh, they were in a position mm. where they weren't the most comfortable, you know? Uh, but I do think that she does, like you said, need to make this part of her public uh, messaging going mm. forward. Because how do you tell that somebody has changed? She might have changed in her heart, but according to the public, we don't really know yeah. what she's about. So how do you kind of hold her accountable in that sort of way? And I guess that is what cancel mm. culture, I would hope, is about it's about holding people accountable mm. so we just kind of need to see a change not just hear about it if you're going to call someone out yeah. i'm sorry to break your word but it's no, your no. it's your right to call someone out yeah. but it's also your responsibility to give them a moment to explain themselves yes. and i think that is exactly the lesson that we're learning with this particular instance yeah. is that she is taking the responsibility to be like i'm going to step away yeah. 
And I really hope she uses the moment to fix it mm. and pave a new path that is positive mm. for the girls who are wanting to do it in the future and want to engage with her. Yeah. 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 Love oh. that. Well, we could see it as a mess up or we could see it as an opportunity for more yeah. growth. I think this is what the conversation is really about. We're talking about people that should be held accountable and shouldn't. You can decide and maybe you can weigh in on this and let us know what you think of this conversation right now. But thank you to our panel once again, okay. Shiraz. Thank you for joining us on this one. Sure. A great conversation and one that I think we should carry on. So let us know your thoughts on this before we head into the kitchen right now. <laughs> so sometimes you just have to elevate your family in terms of numbers, just like you have to elevate your dining experience this winter with timeless pieces that will bring party food and loved ones together, even if you're adding another loved one to the family. Megan Pedro is here to take us through some of her favorite soup bowls just in time for soup season. And yes, she is expecting. Can I just give you like the, the, oh, the ninth hug for the day? Um, congratulations. I, I, I'm going to save the moment for when I can have a good cry with Clem. Clem, I love you, boy. You're going to be the most amazing father. You are going to be an incredible mother. And as a unit, you guys are going to be unstoppable. But that's the whole show for another show, OK? Um, we are getting very excited about soup because we get to eat them out of bowls oh, like yes. this. This speaks to the dining experience. Mm -hmm. So as someone who lives in this, lives and breathes in this space, what do you look for in a soup bowl? There's something quite oh. traditional, but also quite modern and cutting edge here. Mm -hmm. 100%. So a soup bowl, I mean, everyone kind of has their favorite. Does it have two handles? Does it have one? You know, the versatility of the colors. I always speak about colors in, yeah, in styling sure. and in homeware. And you can see Woolies has nailed it with the color palette because literally anything mixes and matches, which for I absolutely sure. love. And what I love about this is you can push the boat out. Everyone can have their own version of. Uh -huh. I love that. You can become quite bespoke when we talk about the experience. Mm -hmm. There are some must-haves. I love the single handle. I think that's oh just my goodness. beautiful. Let's break it down and then actually check which one, you know, is the crowd favorite. Six, uh, yeah, because you can find one for you. Your double handle. Mm. This is quite nostalgic, and I think it almost looks a bit like, you know, hotels that you used to go to when yes. you used to get like your delicious soup. So this style with your double handle is so, so lovely. It's also quite a shallower one and a smaller bowl, which means that you can have a really nice portion. You can really stack up some beautiful yeah. styled items. And, and you're literally warming yourself oh while you are drinking He's your soup. Have more. And yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I, I'm going to say it, and my, my dear grandmother will roll in a grave. You can slurp. Oh. You can slurp with that bowl. It's a slurp uh, bowl. I'm going to call it a slurp you got bowl. The good, yeah. the good, um... <laughs> None of this 45 degree away from your <laughs> tilt. None of that. Not at all. <laughs> you can see this beautiful rib. So again, this is a nice take on a, you know, classic white bowl. Which, again, if you're having white cro crockery on your table, this really just brings your eye in quite nicely. It's an nicely. accent. Yes, 100%. I love that. And, and I think we often forget that texture can be as much of a defining element or something to bring it all together. Mm -hmm. By virtue of the fact that there's a different texture in each set, almost creates that set. I love that. 100%. You can also see in the different um, color tones of the same bowl how it just Remarkably looks completely different. different. Yeah. Oh, wow. And that just kind of pulled in. If you do every t second table setting or something, it just really is quite like a nice eye-catching piece. Then we've got oh, the Vancouver. Okay, this <laughs> is one of my absolute favorites. I love that it's shallow but quite wide, which means you can plate quite low, so your soup quite low in it, and then really stack and play with it. And, and visually, things. yeah, create something yeah. beautiful. I love it. Okay, let's fill these bowls because they are so gorgeous. 100%. Okay, so can I hand that to you? Okay. Right? So let's do let's do one, one of these beautiful see ones. If they are just so beautiful yes. and gorgeous. Then we'll do one of these Vancouver's. Oh, I absolutely love it. One of my absolute favorites that we've got at the moment yes. is the stoneware. So it's actually unglazed at the bottom, which I absolutely love. It's again adding a beautiful texture to everything. And it, you know, it's got that slightly wonky feel yes. to it, which is really slightly beautiful. Slightly rustic, yeah. Speaks to the stoneware, which I absolutely love. And then as you can see, like the color palettes alone, you can see that you can mix and match with different ones, or you can really go quite neutral in its own color palette. And, and very Beautiful. wintry in the tones and quite earthy. I love the fact that we brought outside inside. It just adds to the comfort and the warmth. And then adding even more warmth with the beautiful soup that we've got. So again, the color palette just speaks so stunningly to it. Oh, that is gorgeous. And then in a bowl like this, what I really like is just to plate up, you know, really use the sides. Is that like a twill? Is that what that's called? Yes, a Parmesan crisp. A Parmesan See, I'm crisp. trying to... I'm trying to emanate <laughs> Clem in the kitchen. Yeah, I know. Parmesan crisp today. Um, those are beautiful, <laughs> especially with a tomato flavor profile. Oh my Listen, uh, my favorite thing, um, courtesy of Clem, was a, a, a cheese toasty when you're having tomato soup. <laughs> that is a 
great midnight snack in our house. Oh, ooh, a triple baby. cheese toasty with this kind of soup is absolutely amazing. Oh, and you've added some fresh yes. ingredients in there. <laughs> that is so cute. To just have a pop of fresh to offset that I hearty. Love. Um, Oh, that is beautiful. The versatility of these. Also with styling, you can wrap flowers around you, you can wrap the name tags when you're plating oh, um, as well, which is really great. And remember, all of these, besides this one, is actually dishwasher and microwave safe. If you are unsure, always look under the bowl at Woolworths. It there. always tells you. Oh, man, because you don't. When you're investing in a statement piece like this, don't go and ruin it. 100%. But I, you can push the boat out in any direction. I love you. <laughs> I, love, I love both of you. I love both of you so much. <laughs> oh, man, my soul is full right now. And this is soul food served in generous bowls that are quite beautiful. So choose quality. Serve where that adds style to your setting and that bespoke element. Shop soup bowls and a whole lot more to warm you up from the inside out at Woolies in store, online, or on their amazing app. Just a squeeze of lime and we are ready to go. Yay. I'm, I'm not going to slurp. I'm not going <laughs> to slurp. Cheers. Oh, that's exquisite. I'd have to slurp just a little. It's my feel good show. Oh, welcome back from fantastic recipes. My mouth is still watering. <laughs> news headlines, trending topics about floods and falling trees. You're more likely to ask yourself, what's a tree's favorite way to communicate? And that's not by bashing someone's bonnets, as we've nope, seen in videos. Not no. at all. So we thought, let's branch out and see what our luck of the day is. <laughs> see what you did. <laughs> Yo, you gotta be careful. I would freak <laughs> out. <laughs> oh my God. Hey. This is so fun. This is so fun. I'm waiting for someone to punch the tree. <laughs> oh my word, here it comes. <laughs> Come on, punch the tree. Come on. Oh, this guy looks like he's a... 
Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, if that had to have been me, I would have screamed and ran away. <laughs> I don't know how I would have reacted. I don't, don't try that in South Africa, is all I'm saying. Please <laughs> don't try that in South Africa. Um, OK, I've got one for you. What did the tree say to the other tree during a storm? I don't know. You're a great pal, but I think we should leaf now. Nah. I think it's time for us to leaf now and get some amazing music. <laughs> yes, indeed. Now we're going from laughs to entertainment once again and one last time. And let me tell you, this morning has provided so much gusto, and especially when it comes to these performances. And this is the final performance. We are with Peter Martins as well as Nina Schumann, and they are the directors of the Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival. Now we get one last opportunity to hear them perform. I've been so grateful for this. So Mzanzi, sit back, relax, and enjoy this one. It's Song of the Birds, a Catalan folk lullaby. And the composers are unknown, but this one being done by Peter Martins and Nina Schumann. Enjoy. The Music Festival. Get your tickets at Web Tickets now. It's a musical experience. I love the fact that we get, yes, to see where the culture has come from around this kind of music, but it's the fact that it's being created, experienced now in a completely new way. Absolutely amazing. And they will be running from the 30th of June up until the 9th of July at Endler Hall. That's Stellenbosch University's Conservatorium. Make sure that you book your tickets now via web tickets. They are going to go fast. And for more information, you can check out the link that we've got on screen and we'll keep up on our social media. But to all of our performers this morning, absolutely exquisite. Thank you so, oh. so much. Magical. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
And we can keep clapping, man. That was an incredible show, too. Thank I you, guys. It. Amazing. It a lovely conversation. And you did it all with us. Thank you, Zanzi, for joining us. We'll, we'll see, see you in the morning. bright and early. <laughs> Love ya. Adios. Uh, thank you, everybody. Well Never feel good production.